were you, or were you not, on a gay cruise? <laughs> Now you're 120 percent dick thing. Everybody that age, they're sperminator. Yeah, if we don't care about anything else. We're a walking hard on looking for a hole. That's. <laughs> uh, I have to say you're right on that one. Oh my god. A stiff breeze comes through the room, and you return the favor. Gonorrhea. No. <laughs> Somewhere on the outside of this building, there is a hole where squirrels come in. Trying better to than a hole where dicks come in. Yeah, better than that. <laughs> Going down the stairs to wash the laundry. What the hell? Shh, pizza, pizza. Stop, stop it now. I order you to stop. I'm still touching myself. <laughs> Yeah! All young bitches want to do is pop pills, smoke weed, get drunk, lay around, suck dick, eat hot Cheetos, charge their phone, get a sew and weave, twerk, be bisexual, eat McDonald's, wash their pussy in the sink, lie, take selfies, and talk sh- through Wi-Fi because they phone never on. I think washing they pussy in the sink is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> the Vietnamese trade in dongs. <laughs> Figuratively and literally, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, I, I did decide to look it up. 500,000 dongs is a good night for Pops X. <laughs> like most women, oh. he's an emotional thinker. Good. God. I mean, that's part of the problem we're having now in our, in our society is we have a bunch of emotional thinkers that want the world to, you know, to fall in line with their emotions. <laughs> that's not. Uh, look, reality doesn't give a no. shit about emotions. It's my lived truth. It's your lived truth. No, it's not. It's your perspective. Kiss my ass. Literally like, hey, Sergeant Pop, you got to turn your bear suit. I'm like, over my dead body. No. Just give me a statement of charges. Yeah. You're never getting yeah. this back. Yeah. You can suck it. I'm going to wear this with my Russian <laughs> coat. <laughs> you, you will bury me in this. Hey, hey. Why you got to f***ing be like that, man? Because I'm an asshole and I learned from the best. I'm sitting across from him and I'm pointing at you with all four fingers. <laughs> all right. First of all, the Russian jacket. Is World War II surplus. I'll send you a picture of it, Sarge. Yeah, li- okay. Well, I got wore you that standing new- wearing it with holding two giant buckets like you just collected all the chum from behind the dump dumpster at the bar bar and you're going to go home and make ice cream out of it. <laughs> What's up, you rat bastages? Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. All right, and today, I know we've already touched on this subject recently, uh, but today we have two guests, which are two uh, retired field grade officers who can actually tell us what's going on uh, in the military as it comes to uh, the fun and games behind the curtain. Uh, if you've been paying attention to the media and the numbers of the recruiting and what have you, uh, our military is hurting for certain. And they're shrinking their numbers because they can't make the recruiting goals because they've basically uh, 
gone woke. Uh, they hate whitey. They hate men. And uh, they've driven out many veterans over the years over abuse of power and what have you. And listen, when you want to run a volunteer army, you cannot have officers that are toxic above you that will throw you out of the military for virtually anything. Because once you go over 10 or 12 years, that's a lot of time that you have invested. And all it takes is for you to run into the wrong officer, and boom, you're gone. They can fill out a bar reenlistment without any of the supporting documents. It jams you up. You can go to IG to fight it, but that'll take a year and a half, and you're already out of the service, so you're gone. That happens on the regular. So I have the Battle Dwarf in the house, and I've got uh, Lieutenant Colonel Murray and Lieutenant Colonel Tom Zarumba, who's sideways. but Who's sideways? <laughs> it's all right. I am. It's not a big deal, sir. All right. So, uh, Colonel Murray, why don't you give us a little bit of your resume, where you served, and when you got out and retired and all that. But well, we can't hear you. Oh. How's that? Yeah, we can Here hear we you. Here we go. All right. I was having a lovely conversation with myself on mute. So, I started out in the Air Force uh, back in 91 and uh, spent uh, about five and a half, six years in the Air Force, then transitioned to the Army. And I did... Uh, Missile ops, base launch, and the uh, in the Air Force, and switched over and came into the armor business, and then I switched over into the uh, the cyber business, information warfare. After I went to a, actually I went to a joint school, lost on the Air Force it was one of my last assignments, and that turned out to be one of the best career paths I ever took. And so my last um, 15 years was doing information warfare, information operations for the Army and uh, worked for all the agencies and supported PACOM and um, worked at PAC fleet, um, doing real guy, you know, real world stuff, real world cyber attacks, real world intrusions. And uh, then I, uh, I got out in uh, 13 and I do the same thing in the real world. So that's, that's my story in a nutshell. Do they pay you a lot for that, sir? Uh, cyber is one of the, was one of the best paid and most demand uh, career fields for the last 10 years. And now, because I'm a white guy, it's really hard to get hired to So, and it's it's the, the the dynamic has changed just in the last two years since DEI came out. Yeah. And um, at case of point, I was referred in um, uh, to one of the big hotel chains um, just this week. And they wouldn't even look at my resume. So... Mm. The, the dynamics changing, and it's on purpose. We'll we'll get into that, but yeah, but I've been well, doing cyber for twenty years now. All right, there, yeah. right. Colonel Zaramba. Hey, good evening, Lieutenant Colonel Tom Zaramba, retired here, um, joined the army in two thousand for the sole purpose of being a tanker. I was never a tanker. <laughs> <laughs> um, did active duty from two thousand two thousand four. Station in Korea, then a four drum. Uh, one to get my master's degree. Uh, so I left and joined the National Guard for a few years. Came back in as a civil affairs officer. So in the Guard, I was infantry. The third branch was civil affairs, and I did that uh, up until my retirement this past September. Uh, my last few assignments, my last one was here at Army Reserve Headquarters at Fort Bragg, Fort Liberty. Prior to that, I was with the um, Joint Staff. Uh, at the Pentagon, and oh. prior to that, 18th Airborne Corps uh, back here at Fort Bragg. Mm. So you're at the five-sided building, and uh, you're at your USARC, which stands for what? U.S. Army Reserve Command? Res Reserve Command, correct. Yeah, and uh, if you guys don't know this, the active duty relies heavily on its reserve and the National Guard forces of this country. Because when I was in Iraq in 2004, 51 to 52 percent of all the boots on the ground were Army Reserve or National Guard troops. All right. Yeah. So, and the Army, the active duty Army we have now is even smaller. So they will not be able to do large operations like they did when they invaded uh, at, uh, Iraq in the beginning. So, uh, if something really kicks off, I hate to say it. 
but there's a lot of people going to get drafted and called back in. I'm just saying, don't, don't, don't kill the messenger. I'm just, I'm just telling you guys. All right. so we, we don't was the, uh, None of us. No, we, Tom and I don't. We talked about it yesterday. You're spot on. Yeah. yeah. And, and here's the thing. All right. So I got two officers. None of them are West Pointers. Thank God. There will be some going off in the weeds and talking about Army stories and stuff. So, you know, yes, we're going to talk about the way that the, uh, the military is getting, you know, hitting the fourth point of contact. But there will be examples and stories to entertain you guys. So hopefully that's enough to do it. This is a little bit different of a dynamic show today because I'm trying to let you guys see actual experience from people who lived it. Who, and I'm not just going through a... Uh, you know, an article or a study or something like that. I think it's important that you guys hear this from the horse's mouth. All right. Now, uh, Colonel Zaramba, <clears throat> you and I served together in the 414 Civil Affairs from roughly 2008, 9 ish to 2012, correct? Yes. All right. And uh, I, I've seen this man at. <laughs> This dude's a master when it comes to uh, juggling monkeys, chains, and chainsaws, and what have you. Because we were always under understaffed ever, across the board, never had enough money to get anything done correctly, and we're short on equipment. So it was literally a three-ring circus of three-shell Monty just to get mission capable to get guys to training and what have you. And during that time, I believe... Uh, the 414 trained, I believe it was, what, six companies to go over to uh, Afghanistan, Northern Africa, and Iraq. I'm trying to remember. It's five. Yeah, or six. it was about five or six companies. Yeah. Even though the unit was not combat ready, well, yeah. we didn't have the personnel, the equipment, yeah, and, and, and the proper leadership. Yeah. And remember when they'll tell you, like, oh, well, you're dwell time. You can dwell here for four years before you get deployed again. That never fucking happened no no so what they used in, in fact uh, years later that I, I was asked to talk to the government accountability office about how they did this um they used a deployed uic's so it wasn't the unit um the unit had um basically a shadow of itself that was left in the rear and the unit received a different identification number so technically they created two units out of one so they were finger fucking it. Finger, yeah. So to create a company, they had to bring in uh, soldiers that never worked together from across the entire Army Reserve. For example, um, when I deployed into Iraq in 2009 with the 414th, um, most of those soldiers were not from the 414th. I think we had a handful, four or five of us. The rest were brought in from elsewhere. But on, on paper, it looked like it came from Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember uh, during the 09, we actually had the lieutenant colonel in the rear thinking she was a command of the guys out in, in the, you know, in sector. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we colonel. call her Dina. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Uh, there's a few letters before the Dina, but we can't. Uh, yeah, that would be B I T C H. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, that's, that's not putting it nicely. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was probably. My my first experience with, as probably yours with extreme toxic leadership. That that woman had, had no business being in, in charge of herself, let alone other troops. And we yeah. we saw the difference between Dina and when the other Lieutenant Colonel came two years later. It was night and day. Night right. being Dina, day being the new Lieutenant Colonel. Unit changed within a weekend's worth of time. Correct. Correct. And then, uh, I mean, you were there when you saw me get my black belt in administrative violence towards the end of her command. Were you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we all, <laughs> we all shared that experience. Well, I was sitting in the <laughs> dining room when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> At best, it, it was bizarre what was occurring in that unit. Um, yeah, but I could not see. And the civil affairs falls under a, a command structure called KPOC. And if you want to see the definition of complete incompetence, you just get assigned to KPOC and you stick around for like eight to 10 months and you will see it firsthand. Yeah, I, I think uh, 
during that time, KPOC was under uh, special ops, and then they changed it over to the Army Reserve for uh, training and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they needed, so these other branches were heavy with high ranking officers, the majors and lieutenant colonels. There's no place to put them. So civil affairs has a requirement for a lot of these. So the basically the, the junk from these other units was put into these KPOC units. Yeah. We saw the results of that. Uh, <laughs> Remember Buzz Lightyear? No, oh, no. Which one was Buzz? Kuzno. Which one? Kuzno. Oh, I, th I thought we're not naming names here. I, well, you don't know. <laughs> oh, and away we go. And he's, he's the one that I actually, when I told the story, someone's going to die. He was the guy in command. Because he would come up with these crazy, stupid orders. And he'd try to give these, like, you know, briefings over, like, mock terrain models. And I'm like, oh, my God. He's, this guy's going to get people killed. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, he, had, he had a lot of pressure on him from higher. Yeah. Because, um, you know, he, he had, voiced he his concerns. Um, these commanders of these companies at that time did not have much leeway. Um, so probably at the NCO level, they only saw uh, the, the, the immediate leader, which was the company commander. But mm -hmm. I, I think the problem started uh, a couple of us higher. He, he was the messenger. Granted, Correct. some of these guys should have had the intestinal fortitude to stand up and uh, do something. But I, 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 I could now, now I see the stress that they were under. Uh, the guy was the last few years, and that, that's a difficult thing to do. I know. And I actually took a lot of stress off of all the commanders I had because I, I wrote a lot of their op orders for them. I would just yeah. say, give me your intent. I would go on my computer, find an old op order, cut, paste, change some shit around. Boom, there you go. Because they, they would it stress. Have to be well, if it's already 85% done, I mean, there's, there's only 15% that needs to get depopped. <laughs> yeah, because... I had a standing rule when it came to Zarumba because, you know, he would uh, have me write memos. And I would write it up, and I would bring it to his office. And if it took more than three times, because he would, like, mark it like an English teacher, after three times, I'd put it on my desk and i move on to something else <laughs> the next day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel, do not let this man write a memo. <laughs> no, no. I, I, <laughs> It was a fun activity for me just to see what uh, Pop would come up with. I mean, it was pretty entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, at the Pentagon, you know, you, you sit there in your office. You were at the Pentagon time. You know what that – every oh, yeah. every 15 minutes, some two-star, three-star comes in your office with their hair on fire. Colonel, I need this tomorrow. Yes, sir. I'll get right on that. As soon as they walk out of my office right in the shredder, close the drawer, call it good. Yes, sir. <laughs> three bags full, Roger Rob. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but this is what the the military. Uh, this is how it was before this woke stuff. I can only imagine how fucking crazy it is now. Oh boy! Because remember, like, it seemed like every 30, 45, 60 days ish that we'd always have a suicide stand down because you know more guys were popping their top and uh, you know unzipping their meat suits. And it was always the same shit. Watch your buddy, call this number. We go through all the same stuff. And it was just pointless, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that was the only way, if you've noticed, if something bad happens in the military, the first thing they do is do a, a stand down, usually a safety stand down, a suicide prevention stand. And that's just to cover their, their butts. And they could say that we've done something, but getting people in a room telling them, over and over that about safety and suicide doesn't really do anything, but no. that, that, that was their mark that their benchmark for having done something and everyone was good with it. They still are to this day. Well, what, I mean, we, what happened after this, it was the extremist uh, stuff stand down. I, I was part of that too. In fact, my boss told me I, I couldn't speak up during uh, Wait, I couldn't ask any questions. Extremist stand down. What the fuck's an extremist? Stand -down? Well, they 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 did it at the at all levels back in uh, after January sixth. Yep. Extremist what... stand down, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what he means, uh, sir, Colonel Murray, is any white male Christian American who is patriotic and loves his country. 
Or, oh, yeah. I, I know exactly what it was. I, I just, <laughs> I, I guess what I'm what what I'm in awe at is they actually fell, you know, went through with it at the division and brigade level, all the way down to to the squad level, and people went along with it. I'd have been like, yeah. "Who the fuck ordered this? And why the fuck are we doing this? <laughs> and what the fuck is wrong with you?" And it got to the point where we were wasting like thirty percent of all of our training time doing this bullshit. Oh, it's been going on for a long time, Pop. This yeah. is not new. Yeah. This, 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 I could go back to 07, 08, and how many hours of training did you have to do on, you know, sexual harassment, all yeah. of the other, I mean, that was, it was, we counted it one year, it was like 37 to 40 hours of training just on, um, the mandatory training. Yeah. And that's time. not the, the, the SRPs and all the other readiness stuff that you spend days and, and, uh, and, and cycle and maps doing, you know, for pre-deployment stuff every, every single year, that was like, you know, over 70 hours when you add it up, it's like 350 hours of, of bullshit training that back then I can only imagine how bad it is now and how and, retarded it is. And when I was, I was working, you know, as a team sergeant, and I was literally pulling my hair out with little I have left about all of this useless training. I literally, on my own dime, bought, I believe, half a dozen Airsoft, AR-15s, and M9 Berettas, built a shoot house out of scrap wood and, and bullshit behind the reserve center. So when we had downtime, I had my guys out there, you know, doing room clearing, fighting out of a vehicle, castle keep maneuvers, you know, doing all the stuff they would need to do because they were going to go to Iraq or Afghanistan and they needed to learn how to shoot, move, and communicate and trying to train these guys while they're learning this bullshit that it's it's mindless drone work. Let, let's face well, it. Well, is this at the building in Southfield? Yeah. Where did you put – I worked like a quarter mile from that building. Where the hell did you put a shootout? Right behind the motor pool. <laughs> Uh, look, I green beret that shit. What, what do you want? That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you know how I operate. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah all, the, this, all these stories I'm hearing, this is nightmare fuel for me. I was the operations NCOIC for 8th Army's G5 for civil uh -huh. affairs. And I had, a, I had a female lieutenant colonel who, thank God, was absolutely squared away. God bless her heart. And we had uh, a one star out of Utah. He was with, I think, 11th Group, General Denny Klein. Um, he was a good guy, too. But she didn't put up with any of this. Was in 1998. She would just pencil whip that stuff, the 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 sexual yep. harassment training and all that. She'd just like get it out of here. We're not doing that. We have an actual mission to do. And then when we did like RSO and I's and uh, neos and stuff, we got flooded with reservists, and they had all the requirements for that too. And she'd be like, "Sergeant, just pencil whip that shit." Yes, ma'am. Get it out of the way. They need they need PT tests. They don't need this training. Yes, the, the best mandatory training I ever saw was when I was in Special Forces. We had a guy in our unit who was an actual auctioneer. And he would run through eight hours of mandatory training in like 45 minutes. And I'm telling you, it was comedy gold. Especially like the, the sexual harassment, like don't touch the titties, don't touch the butt, don't touch this, don't put your penis here, don't talk to this part. And, and I, I, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I wish I recorded that. That's brilliant. Yeah, it, it was great. But but this is what I'm trying to do here is <clears throat> in today's current in the current year, I can't recommend anyone go in the military unless you have no other option. No. Because it is absolutely toxic now. And it's in the enlisted ranks all the way down into like the E3s, E4s. And it's literally, in my opinion, our military is mission incapable on a mass scale. I'm not talking yeah. about the 82nd or 101st or, you know, Delta Special Forces units. But they can't wage, you know, full-scale brigade combat team operations against conventional forces. You, you need to have troops to do that. that. It's worse yeah, than and, that. It, and Zarumba, Colonel Zarumba just got out last, you know, last year in 2023. How many of the officers did you see drop in packets to retire as soon as they got enough time? So, so many that the, the conspiracy theory is that the, the systems were purposely shut down not to let these people uh, retire because they had so many at one time. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, everyone that I know, who I worked with um, here on Fort Bragg that had 18 years and over, they're all putting in their retirement packets. That's not, that's not normal. You lose your institutional knowledge. Right. And, and these are some of the, the, the best, best people. Uh, yeah. So Fort I don't Bragg, think it, man, yeah. That's a, that's a home of the special forces and 82nd yeah. airborne. Yeah. They don't airborne, care though. Yeah. They don't care. This is a bigger, this is, there's a, there's a bigger picture here at work that is playing out. And um, Tom and I talked about this yesterday, which by the way, I'm glad we talked to say, man. Um, Thanks. You gave me some uh, food for thought that I didn't have, but, but let's go back to 2001 after 9-11. So when 9-11 happened, this malfeasance that, we, that we're um, getting to started back then. This is not a new phenomenon, neither is the yeah. information war. Back then, the, the mantra in the, in the doctrine was, if you're not with us, you're with the terrorists. And that mantra carried us through 2008, and then Obama came to town. When Obama came to town, the the whole intent was to demoralize demilitarize and decentralize the military and they have done a very very good job yeah. and now they're in the information warfare side of that and if you watch what they're doing they purposely use the vaccine to drive yeah. out anybody that had a strong will then they used the um ucmj ish because they didn't really follow the UCMJ. And you can talk about Gomar some, because there's, there's sure. a lot to that, right? Because, <laughs> you know, when you start your career, they tell you if you don't get prosecuted, you make it to 20. That's a successful career because you'll have complaints, the EEOC, IG complaints, your, your whole career. It's just how the military goes. Well, they have they purposely have set conditions so they can go to Congress. And you said this yesterday, Tom, so yep. I'm going to give you credit for this because this was your – I hadn't said it this way. And I'm glad you did that they're purposely setting conditions so they can set up a draft. And what they need is an army that's not loyal to the Constitution. It's no coincidence that they have moved 12 to 15 million Chinese, Chinese regular, these regular army across our border. That's, there's, no, there's no coincidence in that. They need an army. And it's no coincidence that they've moved all of our strategic reserve equipment to Ukraine and into Poland right now. Because what do we do when we move equipment overseas? We leave it there. We yep. don't bring it back here. Yep. All of our stockpiles are overseas. So this is there's a bigger picture to this that is far more dire than people realize. And the, all of the DEI, the trans nonsense, that's noise. What it really is, is it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a reason to condition and indoctrinate the youngest troops because they only need one generation. And, they, and they've got the indoctrination to a T. Look at who they're look at who they're indoctrinating right now. DEI is not out there. Sorry, diversity, equity, and inclusion is not pervasive in our market because they give a shit about DEI. It's there to discriminate against white people and create a race war, which is exactly what they're doing in the military right now. They're indoctrinating all of the, the predominantly lower income who join the ranks that white people are bad. And there's there's a systemic racism throughout the white culture, et cetera, et cetera. This is a this is a sustained influencing operation that's been going on for the better part of 20 years. It's just a different dress. And the danger in this is that we're talking about leaders that are unaccountable. Well, I can tell you that there was leaders unaccountable because I worked with 426 CA in uh, in the desert when I was in Mosul. And I wanted to shoot that commander every fucking day I talked to him. He was combat ineffective every day. And I kept saying to General Ham, just let me shoot that son of a bitch and I'll take over that battalion and take the fight to the enemy. But that guy has got to go. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And I don't yeah. give a fuck what pressure he was under. One of my good friends was killed on a patrol that should have been in charge of that battalion. He was a way better commander than the, the dipshit they had in charge. So I was yeah, so, rant, so. so you guys are both colonels. And I'm sure you have a whole bunch of stories about officers that should have been promoted but never were. Oh, absolutely. Because oh, yeah. you know, the military, like back during World War II, Korea, and I dare say part of Vietnam, if you were a shit hot commander, you pretty much would go from one command to another command to another command. They'd give you a break here and there. 
And that was like your main job was to command because you were, you were good at it. And then if you were not good at command, you were a staff weenie. Now it's reversed. Now you get people who, who suck at command. They put them up at the top. They're completely incompetent. They move up the ranks. All of the good leaders that I've seen wind up rotting in staff hell from first lieutenant all the way up to major and maybe even lieutenant colonel if they can't pick up a battalion command. That's is true. that about accurate? No, yes. that's true. The suck part's a little bit different. It's not using teeth on the upslide and failing upward is how, is how you get promoted now. Um, <laughs> and the, the the hard part in it is that, like, I had the, I had a major that worked for me that I tried for two years to get him promoted. He'd done command of staff college. He was ready to go to war college. He had, you know, a master's degree. The guy was a fantastic leader. And because of the two star that was in charge of uh, of our brigade, she would not allow anybody that wasn't gay or openly openly liberal to get promoted. I I, I was surprised I got promoted. And it's it's interesting that um, I think I was rewarded for my technical expertise more than more than leadership. It was the lesser of two evils for them, right? Because yeah. at the time we were dealing with a lot of attacks across our infrastructure that they were taking all kinds of secrets. So I think the command was more worried about blocking the attacks at the time than promoting people that were actually legitimately good leaders. So again, the tech bubble kind of helped in that situation, but I, I had a friend that was, that was armor officer. He's one of the best armor officers I have ever worked with. This guy, brilliant tactician could not get promoted past major. And he had, he had done all the gates and the way they used to do it, Back in the old days, uh, <laughs> the way they used to do it, and when Strategic Air Command was still around and all the lieutenants would uh, um, matriculate from their initial training, they had a board at, at STRACOM where all the lieutenants were listed. You were ranked. But from the moment you stepped on active duty, you were ranked. And if you were a fast burner, you had your career path already mapped out in which general officer you are going to follow. And um, I went to STRACOM. I think it was like year three or year four, and I saw my name on the board, and I was like, looked at the general officer I was going to report to, and I'm like, fuck that, I'm out of here. There's no way I'm following that guy anywhere. <laughs> and, you know, I'm lucky, right? Most guys don't get that. In fact, the the Space Force commander, Chan Salzman, he, I served with him at Malmsbury. <clears throat> he was, he was a uh, second lieutenant with me, and a uh, great guy, but I watched what he would have to go through to get to where he's at now, and there was no way I was doing that. Because look, I went to Quantico and spent a year with the Marines in 93, and I met some of the best officers I've ever served with in that place. And almost to the person on the Marine Corps side, almost all of them retired as lieutenant colonels or as 06s, none of them made general officer. And it's because they didn't go to amphibious warfare school. And you, when you look at all the gates you have to go through and all the different levels of bullshit that you have to endure to get to be a general officer, you realize very quickly that what career path you want to stay on. Like I never wanted to be a, a general officer because I spent enough time at the Pentagon and watched how those guys operated and watched all the bullshit. And most of them, let's face it, most of them are socialists. So not all on, of them. Hang, but hang on, sir. sir. So you're so saying that you still have your tonsils intact? And you weren't I, a master at the mouth hug with a head bob with no I teeth? was not. I was not. I like I it. Did, I, I, I did not. Um, yeah. And here's another question. question. How the hell are most of our generals socialists? You would yeah. be very surprised. So when you go to, and I was getting to it, by the way, that was a good segue. To, um, most, of, most of the general officers go to war college. And some of them go to industrial war college and some of them go to become uh, fellows, right? So you get a fellowship, you go to Harvard, you go do asymmetric warfare, you do counterinsurgency, whatever your fellowship is. When you get there, it's two years of indoctrination. And most of the academic institutions are predominantly liberal anyway. Um, like I did a lot of work at, at Naval Postgraduate School doing cyber exercises uh, while I was in command. And I was astonished at how many senior Navy officers were flaming liberals. And this was back in 2011, 2012. This is not today. They were they were liberal all the way back then. You could go all the way back to pre-World War II and a predominant number of the general officers were all liberals and socialists. Wow. So this is not a new phenomenon. What What's the checks and balances were 
at the time was we had a strong conservative element that was in the Senate and the House and the legislative, as well as in the um, lobbyist groups. So that kept a lot of them in check. But now with so much Chinese influence in Washington, D.C. and so much Chinese influence across all the defense contractors, that's why you're seeing this open move towards communism. That's, wow. that's where all this is coming from. This is I a bigger think... agenda than just decimating the military. This is literally they're trying to indoctrinate our entire population to accept communism. That's that's where this is. Yeah. Going. And, and, and Steve, Murphy. I never. What? I, I never uh, understood what Steve uh, meant until our conversation uh, yesterday. Um, I, I realized that, too, at the Pentagon, how many of these guys were complete commies. I thought it was I had a I had a general come in my office in 2021 and one on one he said I'm not going to promote it because I donated to a Republican campaign. And he he knew where I stood on these issues at the time. I was pretty open about it and uh -huh. and he w was uh trusted me to tell me that. Um and also from our conversation with Steve yesterday I had a general who I worked with uh, in a very sensitive place in the basement of the Pentagon and very nice guy, but I was being tested. I was being asked questions. Who do I support in friendly conversation? And then I was warned by a fellow worker and said, Hey, this guy's a complete commie. I'm like, I thought he was kidding the whole time. Wow. But he wasn't. Yeah. You and interrogated. I was being in, 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 basically interrogated in a, yeah. very, Here's yeah. a question. Both of you did what twenty plus years as officers. Yep. Yeah. How many of those years did you actually command troops? Ooh, uh, probably seven. Okay. What about you? Uh, yeah, no, nowhere near as many. Uh, three, four. I was company commander in the guard, and then a uh, company commander in Iraq, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. All right. So, so three I, years. I talk, four I years. I talked to a lot of young guys that want. I want to be an officer because I want to lead troops. You get zero time out of yeah. a 20, 22 career. You're going to command troops. If you're lucky four years, the rest of the time, you're going to be wearing knee pads, you know, juggling, uh, you know, beach balls while massaging a shaft working yeah. on staff. Yeah. And as a battalion commander, I spent four years of battalion command. And I can tell you that that's an unheard of now. Um, but part of it was most of my counterparts that could have taken command were deployed. Mm -hmm. So I was caught in that gray zone where everybody had been deployed once and people were doing their second, third rotations and there wasn't anybody else to backfill me. Um, but after 08, when Obama came in, the entire command structure changed. Like the guy that replaced me, when I retired, um, I went back a year later because one of my majors had wanted me to come back and talk to the troops and talk about you know, cyber warfare, what was going on. And I met this guy and I'm like, dude, where is your dick? You are a fucking cuck. Grow nice. a dick, get your fucking man card back. And he, his battalion was being run by a female NCO, which isn't a bad thing if she's not, you know, if she's at least got some finesse about it. Because look, how many times stopped did you step in for the BC and and take over for and you know take the formations and and take the troops and get a, you know get things going when the the BC's wrapped up with you know the administrative stuff or some kind of legal action pick your flavor right how many times did i have to go bail somebody out for a DUI or you know fights or whatever the case may be but, I, I did that all the time yeah that's my point right yeah, so I did you, you finessed it so it didn't look like the old man was was off fucking around this this NCO literally made it look like she was in charge. And I'm like, you're the fucking battalion commander. When I handed this off, you had missions with NSA, with, with the three-letter agencies. You were supporting PACOM. You had fucking joint billets at PACOM. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you have technical experts here. Why are you sitting here letting this NCO talk about fucking marching with a tech battalion? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, That's all right. I'm sorry. point. Yeah, look at that. You go on the like it. It started like then. And it was it was pervasive then. And they were slowly moving everybody that was that was a strong leader out of leadership positions 
into these positions well, that were more staff oriented. Like, you know, Tom, I know you went through this and that subtle interview you went through. This is how it works for, for black programs. When you, when you're in a black program or you they're, they're trying to court you to go into a black program, you have to have a, a skill set that they need. And so they'll take you to lunch and they'll start asking you questions about your background, you know, um, you know, what have you done? What do you want to do? Do you need notoriety? Do you need to tell people what you're doing? It's very subtle, right? But when they're doing these kind of interviews, like the counterintelligence stuff, which is basically what you went through as a CI polygraph that your commander puts you through to see, are you loyal to the left? Are you mm -hmm. a believer in communism? That's what that whole program was. They started that shit just after January 6th. They used January 6th to justify it. But remember the vetting the FBI did? The whole part of that process was to identify anybody that was a threat that was going to push back on the vaccine mandates so they could push them out of the service. You were already marked to get out of the service before they even oh, signed I know. the paperwork. Yep. And that's what I'm trying to tell people um, that are questioning why they're being kicked out for no reason at this point. Um, I tell them you were targeted two years ago, three years ago for some of you. They um, had a reason. They just didn't tell you. No, didn't no. Didn't tell you. Show. Any any intestinal fortitude nowadays, you're yeah. gone because that you're not subject to being indoctrinated. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but it went beyond that. So I was privy to some meetings at, at um, my last duty station here at Army Reserve Command. Uh, nobody knew we were listening in on this stuff because here's what happened with, with these high level command staffs: the general officers, the commanders, did not trust their staffs. So they held meetings without their primary staff. They didn't trust them with lower ranking people. And they kept these Whoa. meetings secret. Yep. What and the, I'll tell you, yeah, they did. Yep. That's and fun. one of these meetings, uh, it was a, a general here at Army Reserve Command. This had to do with the COVID. And he asked a question after they looked at all the names on the list of people that did not, did not get vaccinated. He goes, how does this affect diversity? That was his only concern. And you, you and he couldn't ask that if he had a real staff meeting. I mean, these people were, once he trusted, so the leaders of some of these staffs were not invited. I know those leaders. They ended up getting booted. They're booted out now. So they went beneath the, the, the staff, the primary staff, to lower elements. We're talking like majors, right? And primary staff is usually a general or a colonel. Mm-hmm. And they had meetings with, the, basically, that's not how the military works. No, you, you cannot have secret goddamn meetings with the with the higher ups without involving their staff. I mean, you. Right. I mean, that's the way the military works. You need to know what your commander's intent is, and if he never tells you, then, I mean, that this is, is how though this is how they're getting away with the stuff that Colonel Murray here is talking about. This right. is how they're dragging communism in is they keep the staffs out of it. Now all these higher level people are making all of these decisions and bringing in DEI and communism and diversity and all this stuff uh, like the colonel was talking about. And the staffs then just have to eat it after the meetings. That's wow. what I'm yeah. seeing. And, and think about it this way, right? So this is at the very top. This is being driven down, right? Yeah. And I've, I've crossed paths with Lloyd Austin several times. And first of all, the guy's a, fucking miserable human being in person he's even worse when you have to sit and listen to him pontificate about whatever the fuck he's passionate about but he was put in place for a very specific reason and that reason is to, to is to decimate the military in total obama tried to do it from 2008 to 2016 and he was highly successful look at how many general officers he replaced in the first few months of his presidency he went through like 40 general officers but it's not just the general officers. You have the senior executive services that run all of the agencies like DISA and, uh, and uh, I can't think of a Def Schmack, Def Schmack and the doodads. Anyway, <laughs> um, but you've got, you've got all these agencies that have SESs now, including the VA. And the VA has gone through a transformation too, right? Yeah. People think that when Trump came in, he fixed all this stuff. He didn't because all of those Obama appointees were still in D.C. Yeah, so. And the first thing they did as soon as Trump left is they got rid of anybody that was loyal to Trump. And then they started targeting using the FBI, 
uh -huh. and using using key leaders throughout the military they started targeting anybody that was loyal to the constitution so now they're trying to consolidate power but this is where they're going to fail they're going to fail at the place where they have to execute because they just set perfect conditions for a perfect storm in both the middle east and in ukraine and if they push forward in ukraine and do this whole stupid idea of attacking russia directly this is going to turn to shit really quickly because we don't have the logistics we don't have the, the log trains we don't even have the manufacturing apparatus to replace one fucking bullet on the battlefield that we expend. And we've sent all of our strategic stockpile. So we maybe have two weeks. Do you think any of these fucking snowflakes they've put in the military in the past two years are going to pick up a rifle? Most of them are going to panic and drop their weapon. The first fucking gun, you know, first round that snaps over their head. So they've created the perfect storm. No. And the other part that this is going to fail is that you have, a perfect storm here in the US because you have all these illegals that are getting government money and that's about to run out. So they're gonna have chaos here and chaos there. I don't know which army they think they're gonna use, but even if they have 20 million troops on the ground right now, they're not gonna hold a city street. There's no way they can do it. They can't hold a city like you know Los Angeles or San Francisco. Maybe they don't intend to. Maybe they're gonna send the troops out in the countryside. But I can tell oh. you that they're going to fail at some point. And as that system erodes, it's going to be guys like you and me that are going to, that are going to pick up the rifle and lead people forward to first secure our neighborhoods, then secure our, our communities, then secure our towns, then secure our states, and then we'll take the fight to the enemy. But that's how it's going to go. And the piece that people don't realize is that once the first bullet goes down range here, and it will, everything stops. There's no more fucking Starbucks. There's no more trips to the grocery store. There's no more trips to the ER. You have what you have. You fight with yep. what you have. And you better pull your head out of your ass and, and put your ego aside. Because if you don't, it's going to suck for you really, really quickly. Yeah, and the people that we've imported, the people that they're putting in, they want to put the military under a draft. These are people that come from countries where they won't even think twice to cut your fucking throat for a banana in your hand. That's the level of violence we've imported into this country. I've spoken about this several times. I saw it when I was in North Africa as well. The things that are coming into the country right now are basically feral, a lot of them. Um, if they put those things into uniform, they're never going to be able to control them. You you can't control that on a battlefield. I those... was getting there. They don't want to. They don't care. They're bullish. Yeah, I, I agree. That's not, that's not the point of control. I mean, today I think... Uh, we found a Chinaman on a base in California. And so if you're yeah, coming in here in this country to uh, get a job for economic benefits, political freedom, that's what we assume. Why would you mm -hmm. risk breaking into a, on a base and get yeah, hot? Yeah, Chinese asset, okay. that's why. Correct. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So yeah. the, the, the bigger piece I was moving towards is that China's big game plan here. Notice how we talk about Ukraine and Russia and Iran and all these other places that need a war. We don't say a word about what's going on with China. Nobody says anything about what's going on in the Philippine Sea, what's going on in the South China Sea. Nobody's talking about it. Why? Because they're all fucking owned by China. So the, the China's bigger picture, Michael Yan was telling me that he had dinner with these two Nicaraguan generals. And he was saying that the Nicaraguans are openly saying that China's plan is to flood every country on the planet with Chinese and just take over. That's exactly what they're doing. And they have to demilitarize us in order to do it. They know that. But again, there's too many armed Americans. There's too many people like you and I that are awake to what's going on. And it, there's too many of us that are going to counter what they're doing. And at some point, we're going to hit that midway moment where we'll have some small victory or some decisive victory we may not even recognize at the time but it's going to throw their whole plan into chaos and they're going to be retreating from that point on and the thing that that people need to keep in mind is that all of this is a bigger plan there's no coincidence in any of this in the military this is a very specific plan to push everybody that has a you know has a, a loyalty to the constitution 
or loyalty to America out of the military. And look at how highly effective it's been. It's been the most highly effective um, operations campaign I've seen in decades. And it's done by our own fucking people. Yeah, it's disgusting. At what point do we start saying the word treason? Yeah, it is treason. I was going to say that. It is treason. It, it's absolutely treason. It and is absolutely by every definition. Absolutely it is. So here's the question, uh, and, and Pop, you've been on my show several times. You know exactly, you know exactly what I say. Mm -hmm. People in this audience need to realize that there's a line in the sand that everybody has. What's your line in the sand where it's more expensive, more costly to go along with what they're trying to get you to do than it is to pick up arms and break the law? Because that moment is coming. And when it hits here, when it hits you, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be a wake-up call for some of you because people are fucking blissfully unaware. Blissfully. Yes. Oh my God. Look at how many of these, these – I'm going to use a knife hand. I'm going to shamelessly use the knife. <laughs> By the way, on, on a side note there, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. Knife hand ass chewing. <laughs> I've and done six of them. So for it. I'm like, shit, I could have just gone to my battalion commander's office with a stupid idea. No, I, I've done hand. six knife hand chew, on ass chewings, mostly for fathers to their sons. Oh, that's fantastic. Because you know how sons are. They don't really listen to the father. I yeah. have two nephews in my house. Trust me, I know exactly yeah. what that's like. Screen door. Fucking close it. <laughs> um, but when this happens, people are blissfully unaware. It's people are, they're working, they're doing yeoman's work to try and act like everything's normal. Everything's fine. It's not. Yeah. I see a tremendous amount of that here in my County. Uh, an upside, I'm, I'm an old Sigeter. That's what I did with Siget. So I patrol the electronic whatever's. And I'm seeing a lot more these days of the Gen Z kids starting to wake up to exactly what you're saying. There's a there's a parade basically of young girls going. Why are none of the men doing anything? It's obvious that something is wrong. Why are none of the men doing anything? So yeah. there's a there's a there's a buildup happening. Well, Isn't like in my funny? case, in my case, like I'm old and broken. There's not much I can do. So I'm planning to get out of the way. Maybe I could be like a PR guy, but. Like with my injuries and, and I mean that shit's caught up with me, man. I'm I'll tell you where just... you're gonna be, Pop. I'll tell you exactly where you're gonna be. And you're gonna front be line. Gonna be training people <laughs> and you're gonna be back keeping keeping things moving back, you know, in the in the safe areas. That's where you're gonna be. Because we're gonna need a pipeline of people that are A, know how to use a firearm, B, know how to use, you know, how, how to be a medic, how to get them task organized. You could do all that. Yes, right? you're yeah. special forces. You could do all you training yeah. girls. Isn't that, wasn't it your fucking job? Training well, girls. It was my job. It was my oh, job. Fuck, yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna <laughs> sit back and drink beer. I'm going to hell with diet. Diet. So oh, what's happening yeah. here? Keep going, sir. Keep going. I'm, I'm getting berated by a lieutenant colonel. <laughs> so, hey, I'm enjoying the fuck. used to do this to me That's all the time. Like, it was hilarious. Fuck, get in there and unfuck that lieutenant. Take that goddamn fight to the enemy. Get in there. Hey, hey Colonel Z, did I or did yeah. I not report? Every time you had to counsel me, I'd report to his debt in front what, of his desk like this. Pen, pen in hand. <laughs> yes, sir. This is fantastic. What do you want me to sign? I, I never, and he always asked me, are you doing this because you want to or you're doing this because you're told to i'm like sir and pop just fucking sign it <laughs> <laughs> I, I still got a stack of your counseling statements somewhere here in my attic you're a complete tom asshole like that all the time <laughs> oh yeah tom will identify with what i'm about to say because every battalion came in and goes through this so sergeant Upty frats and staff sergeant Bernard's come into my office and they want to tell me about the best idea in the world and I, I listen patiently for the first two minutes of their of their whatever diatribe they're going on. And by the time I'm done talking, they're both at attention. They both have realized that they need to go out, line their pockets with wrenches, walk out in the ocean, and take one for the team. Because that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. And I never want them to come back to my office and say another fucking word. Just go, tell your first sergeant. In fact, hold that thought. First sergeant, sir, murder these two motherfuckers and never bring them back here. Yes, sir. Get out of my office. You know what I mean, right? That's and old. Right right yeah. 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 So I remember uh, like uh, Colonel Zaramba, and he was the captain at the time. We we're doing this big layout, 
and I was short some water cans. So I got them from the hospital that uh, deactivated in the building. And he's literally going through my hand receipt, and he's like, well, you're short water cans. And I'm like, sir, there's there's eight water cans there. He's like, well, there's – no, those are from the hospital unit. I, can I see the hand receipt, sir? It doesn't say, you know, 414 marked. He goes, he said, God damn it, just re-stencil them down. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you got to make shit happen, man. Oh, God. that's a good that was time. typical yeah. SOP. You're out of equipment. You steal the units next to you without them knowing, and then you kind of have to break back into the unit and it return is the not, stuff so they don't it notice. Is not, it is not theft, sir, as long as it remains on Army grounds. It is reassignment. Correct. Well, I, I think uh, even theft. in uh, active duty, we, we had one antenna for five battalions. Uh, <laughs> And every anyone who had an inspection, they got the antenna. But if we ever had yeah. to go to like JRTC or NTC, they finally find out that there's we, only one antenna for these five battalions. How, how, how that was the go good on? part about SIGINT. We could build our own antennas. We rebumpered a whole five ton once, uh, brought it over to Camp Howe in Korea, and uh, took our broken one there and took one of their good ones and just re stenciled everything. And... Oh, God. It's so easy to. <laughs> Alle allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not reassignment, it's procurement. And the way you do mm, that that's right. is you bring a CW5 in your office and you're like, Chief, I need two five tons. I need a couple of deuce and halves and I need yep. at least four 1119s and I armored Humvees. And I don't want to know where you got them from. You didn't, you never got this order. In fact, this is just a conversation. <laughs> I don't care where you procure them from. And I never want to fucking hear that you got them anywhere. CW5s are like that, gods though. Yeah. Oh, they do, they do their backroom dope deals, and then you yeah. have all the equipment you need. And they, you never ask where, because you know, at least at the end of that conversation, is a you know, somebody's going to read you your rights. You just let them go do their thing. And yeah, we had one of those chief white, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. I had, I had like 26 um, chiefs in my uh, warrant officers in my battalion, and I never asked them a fucking question about where anything came from ever. Mm -hmm. I never looked at my M tell once. Because I just signed and went, Roger, it was there. Now, MTO, what, uh, mission training, what does that MTO stand for? Uh, mission tactical equipment? No, so, no, it's, uh, God, I've uh, been retired since September. I can't remember that stuff. <laughs> I just knew what MTO was. I didn't know what it meant. No, no, it, it's go. all the shit you're supposed to have, all the equipment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Vehicles are easy though, because you walk, you walk over to the, you walk over to the maintenance yard. You got to just take a clipboard with you with a piece of paper on, and you're like, yeah, they, you go stand in front of that one right there. Sergeant, I need my truck back right now. Who who's gonna who's gonna give me the paperwork to sign for this? I need this thing right now. Stand by, sir. What are you from? Does that matter? I'm a colonel. I want my fucking vehicle right now. <laughs> Going to the field. A, yes, sir. Roger, shady. stand by. Sign the paper your way. Who who'd you sign for? I don't know. I'm Dirk Diggler today. I don't know. <laughs> Dirk Diggler. Dirk Diggler's <laughs> gone. That's how it works. So yeah, that's so, how it goes, man. That's how it goes. But, it, but I, it's I, sad that they're they're doing this. And here's another thing that uh, that really bothered me. We're gonna go back to the four one four when I had to deal with mm -hmm. Dina. Mm -hmm. The four one four came from New York State. When it showed up here, there were still I think fifteen guys who were still on the rolls that should have been you know dropped because they they moved the unit over five hundred miles away. And, uh, you know, I didn't know this at the time, but Dina was trying to kick all these guys off the books by, you know, less than honorable discharges. And by the time I caught wind of it, there was, uh, you know, a guy named Specialist Calabrese who was he had a CIB, he was air assault, airborne, and he was in New York State. And they were literally going to give him a dishonorable. And I had to, I had to get him involved with, uh, Staff Sergeant Sportello, who was the old UA of the unit back in New York, who squared him away. But, you know, IG complaints were filed because of, you know, giving people illegitimate dishonorable discharges because it was, quote unquote, easier. And she got she got a pass. They didn't. I mean, you should you should get fucked through the ringer for that, in my opinion. And what and then you have the the abuse of the Gomars. The abuse of the bar of reenlistment bullshit. I mean, that needs to go away as well. What well, was well, well, the, the um, four fourteenth move? Uh, that was highly political. Um, you had a group of people that wanted to keep that unit in New York. Group of people that 
want to move it to Michigan because of what the Muslim and Arabic Dearborn, the population, Dearborn. right? Yeah. How many Arabic speakers did we get in that unit the whole time? I think maybe two. I, I can't even recall one. Maybe after I left, but when I was there, I, I don't recall a single. Were they Lima qualified even? No, they were not. No, they were not. Yeah, but that was the reason. And when that stuff started failing, th these leaders, like I'm um, sorry, Dina was not a leader. No, what she was doing, she was a bureaucrat. The reason she tried to <clears throat> kick the soldier out because. It was much easier to do it because all he was was a number on an Excel sheet and it showed up red. A bureaucrat takes care of the paper problem. A leader would accept that problem and help that soldier out. Yeah. That's not clear to anyone. And that's a, that's a difference between what I noticed in some 20 some years of service. And that's one of the main distinction reasons. between uh, those two. There's a, a big, big difference. And that's one of the main reasons I was always getting counseled because I was always that NCO I was like, well, that's fucked up. Like <laughs> I literally were trying to get Bruins promoted to E7. Right. And he got I, I literally they could not get his ERB fixed. And I, I sat across from him in another cubicle and listened to him for a year try to fix his ERB. They pass him up for the second time for Z7. He storms out just in a fit of rage. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, right, this is fucked up. And I literally wrote an email to the sergeant major of the fucking army <laughs> and explained to him, why does it take an NCO 10% of his career to get promoted? What's going on? And it, he, he emails me back like 30 minutes later. You know, fill me in on the context. And I literally wrote, I wrote the whole thing for him. And the sergeant major of the army copied every sergeant major in the chain of command all the way down to our sergeant major. Ouch. And Bruins was back on the list to get his E7 by 2 o'clock that afternoon. And I was signing a counseling statement by 1,600 hours. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? You have to do these things. That That's why yeah, I, I never made sergeant see, major. I could just see that hat, that call from the, the smart sergeant major of the army coming down to the battalion. Because you know there's a brigade commander or at least a division commander or two involved in that conversation. Oh, that would be priceless. Yeah, and, and people don't seem to understand. You have the officer ranks and then you have the enlisted ranks. You have the general officer of the army and then you have the sergeant major of the army. And that dude, the sergeant major of the army, at least the ones that I knew, like Command Sergeant Major Kid, that dude wheeled a a nuclear bomb. If he did not like you, it didn't matter if well, if you were a general, he couldn't do much to you, but he could screw you up from like full bird colonel down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah These are guys that are like scotch guards that are on their arms and run ten miles in uniform with freaking you know, Corframs on, and they're they're not sweating a bit. Those, that's what it used to be the start smoking of the a cigarette. Absolutely, <laughs> these guys were like heart takers and life breakers, man. They, they were like literally, they could come into an office. There'd be a room full of lieutenant girls. They'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here, Roger Sergeant Major." We're out. <laughs> I mean, that's our major of the army. Dude. Nobody's gonna fuck with him because he works for the four star, and all of us work for the four star, and we know how that's gonna go. So that conversation is very short. Colonel, sir, you're fired. Roger, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. You'd be in the field of commander exercise. You walk in the tent. I, I used to love it. Murray, sir, where's my tank? Right outside, sir. Is it running? No. Get the fuck out of here. You're fired. Yes, sir, I'm fired. <laughs> sir, <let's start> that <laughs> but, you know, I ran top cover for, uh, you know, Colonel Zaramba when, you know, when he was in the field, you know, deployed. And I mean, I was always running, I ran top cover for uh, Donahue because Dina. Dina, Dina yeah. Now, he was literally on the hook for like sixty or $70,000 of uh, equipment that was just missing. It was never sent to the unit. So he calls me up. He's like, hey, son, pop, I'm fucked, man. They're going to they're gonna really hammer me. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, just so happens where all this stuff was stored in the Butler building had an unsecured door. Okay. I brought that to the attention of the full bird who ran the facility. And I'm like, sir, I got a, I got a, a captain over there who's on the hook for like $67,000 worth of equipment. And your Butler building is unsecure. And I don't know how long it's been unsecure. He's just like, what? So we walk out there. I show him the side door. I'm like, this thing is, it's been like this for, you know, at least six or eight weeks. 
He's like, what? What the fuck? Ah. So when the, they came to do the investigation, they went and talked to the facility commander, and he confirmed that the Butler building was unsecure. So his hand receipt went from like sixty-seven thousand to like, I think eighteen hundred, which is manageable. Yeah. We've, yeah, we've all had one of those 15 sixes done on us. I mean, you can't be a battalion commander and sign for MTO without having some, you know, some logistics, old for, you know, NCO and an officer come climbing your ass because something's missing. It, that whole system was so fucked up from the first, the first nanosecond it was deployed. Like, I lost a truck. I lost a fucking Hemet. How do you lose the Hemet? It's got eight <laughs> wheels. How the fuck do you do that? Sir, uh, Some asshole from the battalion uh, next door comes uh, over and rebumpers your truck. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> they did. They, in fact, they were like running around going, Oh, this got to go to APC. Rebumper this one, rebumper this yeah. one. Colonel, your uh, yeah. uh, Next know, thing you know, your truck's at the rail heading down the road. Oh, in in Bay up in Iraq, they had um, a sign out there um, looking for one of those construction trucks whose tires are as big as a house. <laughs> No shit. How does yeah. that leave the base in Iraq? No. Right? I mean, we had weird things happen, like donkeys come on base when you know we had 360 security with out, you know, outposts, listening posts, uh, berms, and everything, right? And a donkey comes on post. I mean, it's paranormal stuff. Well, the best going on, right? none, of the, none of the guards in the outpost seem to know how that donkey got through the wire. No. None of them have a clue. It's no. like the two that uh, my favorite is you, you, you leave two privates with wands to guard the gate coming in, you know, when all the hajis come through the gate. And you're like, make sure nobody comes here with weapons. Yes, sir. And while you're at it, that's the general's rock. Don't let anything happen to that fucking rock. Come back. Metal ticks are both broken. Rock does. None of them have a clue what happened. And they're like, who came through? I don't know, sir. We haven't been taking a log. Oh, okay. So you just let 100, 100 green on blue come in with weapons. We got it. Thanks, Private. We're good to go here. We're green, green, sir. Also, is this your donkey? <laughs> yeah. When I was in a, an 04 and Biop, um, they, you know, Pete. There's all of these civilian vehicles on post. They belong to contractors or something. And I, I, probably a couple dozen times, I'm like, I need to go to the other side. So I'd like jump in some random vehicle, start it, drive it to where I needed to be, and I would just leave it there. Man, sorry, sorry, Pop, I got to mention this vehicle thing. I was, um, wake up one morning at nine o'clock Saturday, Iraq, Kirkuk, supply sergeant knocks on my door. Hey, Captain. I have something for you. I go outside. It's one of those Chevy Tahoes, up armored. Nice. They're hard to get. Nope. Oh, you know, tinted windows, everything in there. I'm like, oh, thanks. Uh, thought nothing of it. Driving around post. I open up the glove compartment. They got sunglasses. I'm like, <laughs> something's up. I had somebody's clothes, <laughs> right? Personal effects. <laughs> and I had it for a week. And I'm driving down <laughs> this part of base. And I see a guy carrying bags, right? just random guy carrying bags outside of this one building. He drops the bags, points at me. He goes, that's my truck. I'm like, oh, shit, right? It turned <laughs> out they confiscated my truck when I parked it. Um, I didn't know this, but I had my stuff in that truck at that point. So I had to find out where that, where that truck went. It belonged to a White House um, <laughs> communications team. At the uh, PRT in Kirkuk. Oh, yeah. So I did a walk of shame and ask for my stuff out of that truck. I did not say nothing to the supply sergeant. Like, I had no well, idea what to tell him. I would absolutely them. lock the keys in that. I would absolutely <laughs> lock the keys. In. What? The shirt? Sorry. I, I, there, we had a couple of those up armor uh, Tahoes in Mosul. And uh, one of my, one of the lieutenants I was working with, he's like, yeah, this is going to the Iraqi general. Threw the keys in, locked the door, <laughs> closed the door. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> I'm like, nicely done. Nice. Where's the Were other any of you guys in country when they caught Saddam? Oh, yeah. No. I saw him in his underwear in Baghdad. Yeah. I, I fucking tried to go there and, and get in to go get a, a picture taken with him so I could turn it into a Christmas card. I could not get through that final, you know, hey, there's like hey, three, three hey, layers of security. Hey pop. I get in there. hey pop. Yeah. You should you should have called me because the guy who ran the team that caught him 
Yeah, I trained that guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm really like, I'm gonna, I'm we, gonna. We, next we called him Watso. This kid was a freaking genius, and he had balls of iron. When he got in country and started running the team, he was an intelligence guy, but he was trained tactical in the unit that I had him in. Um, he had glasses, and he had the little chubby cherub cheeks and everything, but the kid had balls. He gets there, and he's given the intelligence briefing, and apparently one of the like majors from the Ranger Regiment is like, oh, you don't know the ground truth, this, that, and the other. Watso goes back. Gets his armor and weapons. Says, "Let's go out." And they go out the gate together with him, and everything that Watso had told him was correct. But uh, he's he's the guy that built the intelligence map, and that is now the standard that came out of that mission. Cool. Yeah, he's at. Uh, I think he's at Cybercom now. He retired in 2017. He was so he's out of the game, huh? This guy was brilliant. This little bastard. We got him as a PFC in a unit with only NCOs. We're like, why do we have this guy? And my my friend John, he's in E70s, just, just, just wait. I'm like, I don't want this guy. He's a PFC. What am I going to do with him? He was a brilliant uh, GIS analyst. Just there was nothing he could do with GIS data. And so we'd take him out occasionally, go drink him with him, and we'd coin him and make him buy drinks. And one night we go to coin him, and he, he smiles at us, and we're like, you're a PFC. There's, there's nothing you can do here. You're buying beers. He goes, Kunk pulls his hand away, the little bastard had written the White House, Dear Mr. President, my NCOs continually coined me and there's nothing that I can do about it. The White House sent him the President's coin. Nice! Damn. And for the civilians advice. out there watching the show, I mean, that's the whole coin check is like, you know, it's like a big pissing contest. Yes. That's all it is, too. That's all those are worth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's but just that is balls on a freaking... He was an E4 by then, but that's tremendous set of balls on that kid, man. But like well, he was so smart. NCOs, but but right? here's the thing: mm -hmm. the quality of the troops that I had when I went to Iraq in 04, compared to the the quality of the troops that I had when I left in 2018, radically different. Because in 2018, in the civil affairs unit I was in, I had uh, about a dozen female, you know, soldiers. And only two of them could pass PT on a, on the regular basis. All the rest of them were pregnant, fat, profile. It, and the minute you 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 know got on their ass and tried to make them do PT and everything, they would file an EO or sexual harassment against you. And then you 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 have people you know breathing down your neck. And that's one of the main reasons I always had nanny cams in my office. I never allowed any women in my fucking office at all ever. And cause it was just a whole shit show. And I can only imagine now that you have these women that, let's face it, biologically, they should not be doing combat roles. And now you have trans people who are literally out of their fucking mind serving next to you with fucking weapons. Non what could go wrong? Some of them were non deployable. Non deployable. They could be non deployed their whole careers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's bullshit. And here, here's, 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 Here's Spies something that's been happening last uh, few months here. So when the, the military gives you drug tests and you take that drug test by peeing in a cup and you have a person watching you pee in yeah, a cup. Did that job. Okay. So what's happening Anybody. now is uh, some anecdotal cases. You had a female that claims she was a male commander and she ordered one of the troops to watch her pee in that cup. And, and this happens this way and that way right and, and that's the practical problems right now um and th that could destroy a unit i mean everyone has an opinion on it. so it's not the simple fact that a person has to watch somebody pee it's the after effects of that that could destroy a unit's morale and it's and it's happening right the, uh the other thing is with these transgender uh since they're not deployable they're really not part of your unit yeah it's unfairness yeah, they right serve at this purpose. point. That's so yeah. bad for morale. And you can't do you can't it. That, that, that. That's the problem. We're not talking about, oh, well, one or two uh, things that happen. These little incidents, having to watch, a, a, if you're a female watching a male piss in a cup, right? That word gets around quick. That, that, that could destroy a whole unit. Have that transgender that doesn't have to deploy. <clears throat> word gets around quick on that. So you, you got to look at the, the numbers are 
have exponential effects on the units. Yeah, and here's another thing. You know, remember we did the command and climate survey for Dana. Yes. And then, she, like within uh, two weeks after that, she got a fellowship at Harvard. Yeah. Now, I, I, I've been hearing now in some of these units that have trans commanders, you, even if you do a command and climate survey, and like ninety percent of the unit says, "I have no confidence in this guy," they still won't relieve the, that that individual. No, well, yeah. first of all, there's no it's there to break morale. It's being yes. done deliberately. Are you watching any of the comments, Bob? Because this they've got some funny people in the audience. Oh yeah, yeah. Colonel Murray, you you should you outrank Pop. You should order him to have troop on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, here, get, I, get that done. Wait, get that shit done. <laughs> the uh, Army Reserve Commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jody Daniels, she did a climate survey uh, a year or so ago. And it came out horrible. In, in fact, that, that's something I, I want to share with you uh, uh, if you want to share it in your upcoming shows. But she basically said it's that bad that she's suicidal. She went home and wanted to cut her wrists. Because it's damn. horrible. I have the transcript of it. Mm. I did a FOIA request to get the video. Uh, obviously, they're not going to respond to that. But I will acquire that video and I will share it. A climate um, survey on her? Yeah, so she did a command climate survey for the, the headquarters of Army Reserve Command, right? And it came out bad. And she after that, she wanted to dress it with her command. And it, it, it was horrible. I mean, she had the statistics up there. I, I would share that. They, they try to hide that stuff by saying it's, you know, uh, for official use only, all that kind of garbage, which it's not. But she didn't want that stuff getting out. And... All those problems that we talked about, I mean, it's like 50% of these units, that, that unit. Sir, thought, pardon me for speaking frankly as an NCO on that particular subject right there that you're talking yeah. about, but here's all of the fucks I have. <laughs> if she's that lousy a commander, I don't care about her feelings. I, do, I don't care yeah. about her feelings to begin with. Yeah. But I particularly yeah. don't care about her feelings if her troops have no faith in her. There's no point for her to be there. If there's no morale, there's no commander. You're operating Correct. under a different paradigm, though. So the paradigm I agree, we sir. all served in yep. was one of, you know, duty on our country. That was our paradigm, right? Yes. Mission first. And all of us, what was our ethos? Never leave a fallen comrade behind. That was right. our ethos. That's that's who we are. Yep. And this new command group, this is what I was talking about earlier, this new command group. That's that's come over since Obama came in. They don't care about good order and discipline. They don't care about climate. They don't care about readiness. They don't even care about um, equipment or training. They only no. care about numbers, statistics, and and doing exactly what they're told to do. They've been indoctrinated to do that. So this, the, I, I doubt that this commander was shocked by the results. I think no, what, what she was more shocked about is that most of her soldiers were going, if you, if we were in an alley together and it was dark, you would not come out of it. Because yeah. you know how the Joes are. They're going to tell you, I did climb, command climb surveys. We did one in our battalion. And they're like, all I know is if I ever see this major again, I'm going to shoot that son of a bitch in the head, and then I'm going to piss on yeah. his grave. I mean, <laughs> What do there you, you go. What do you say to that, right? Yeah. But that's how it goes. See so, the, the, but she she knew it was coming, right? The, yeah. I think the part yeah. that was disillusioning from her is that everybody above her doesn't care, and it's doesn't the, care, the yeah. whole all what you're seeing right now. So, I, I pop, you've heard me say this, so bear with me. Everybody that's listening to this, all one thousand of you, should go read the book "Pawns in the Game" by William Carr. And you will understand exactly what's going on right now. We we are literally on the event horizon because they have set conditions yeah. for everything. All these lines of operation to fall apart all at the same time. And this will fall apart within the next six months before the election. I guarantee fucking it. I would love to be wrong. In fact, I'm hoping I'm wrong. But yeah. this slow burn since 2001, the, the police state establishment with the Patriot Act, the, the renewal of the Patriot Act, and all the additional stuff that they put in the budget. That's not a coincidence. 
This has yeah. all been designed to bring us to this point where they can decimate the military and and get rid of anybody loyal to the Constitution. That's that's why they're doing this. And Tom, I'm sorry you lived through this, man, because you deserve to, to have a career where you could actually do the right thing. They don't care about the right thing anymore. They only care about people oh, that are yeah. believers and will follow orders. What, they don't even care if they're lawful general orders. Remember those conversations, Tom? Is that a lawful general order? No, sir, it's not. Then go fuck yourself, right? You could uh, say been, that to a general officer. In fact, I've been in the yep, – I was a major. I have. I I've done that as an NCO. Absolutely yeah. you have. Yeah. So I, I went to PACOM, and I'll never forget this because I had one of my senior NCOs with me and my buddy. Um, he's another major, and we were going to support this exercise at PACOM. It was we walk in, it's a room full of Navy officers, and he goes, we're going to break up your team. And we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and you guys are going to go support us. So I went, uh, first of all, no, you're not going to do that. Second of all, I don't work for you, and I'm here on my budget, which means I can cordially tell you to fuck off. <laughs> and that means I'm not going to be your staff, bitch. I'm not going to get your coffee. I'm not going to go aboard ship and do captain's mass. The captain can tongue my sweaty ball sack. I'm going to bring my professionals in here. We are going to support the operations on the cyber side, which is what we're supposed to do. And then when we're done with our mission, we're going to fucking leave. We're not leaving on your schedule. We're leaving on our schedule because I have orders. You know, these things that come on a piece of paper that say, this is what you're going to do. There's a little line that says fun site. That doesn't say Navy on it. It says United States Army G3. Yeah. I work for the four star. You're more than welcome to call him and tell him I'm a dick, but I'm not going to be your bitch. So I that's how that. this is going to go. Yeah. And we walked out of the room and my buddy goes, you know, uh, I think I'll be a tow truck driver when we get fired. I go, this is how it's going to go. He's going to go back to the to the admiral. The admiral's going to call the general. The general's going to call the BC. The BC's going to call me and shoot me a new asshole. And then tomorrow we're going to show up and do our mission. And literally at nine o'clock at night, I got a call from the BC. Did you really tell two oh six captains to fuck off? I said no. I, what I said to them, sir, is that I paid for this, you know, with my funds, so I can tell them to fuck off. That's what I said to them. <laughs> He was like, uh, probably want to use different language. No, it's Navy. I don't give a fuck about that. So, But here's the funny thing. The funny thing is, in every one of those instances, you realize where the lines of authority are, what a lawful general order is, and what an unlawful general order is, yeah. right? And you, you, when we were trained, indoctrinated, when we joined the military, to be able to stand up to a senior officer when we knew it wasn't a lawful general order. That was how we got away with that, right? It wasn't us being disrespectful. It was us saying, this is no lawful general order, and here's why, right? I probably could have said it with a lot more tact, but at that point, I didn't give, give a shit. Um, but the point is, is that we don't do that anymore, and we're not training troops to do that anymore. Just like, what was the mantra that you had? Especially when you joined the first, the, the, literally the first month you were in the Army, what was the first thing they drilled in your head? You oh. are always out front, lead from the front. If Never I'm leave from the rear. Lead from the front. Take care of your soldiers. Make sure your soldiers are training. Make sure that you you dot the I's across the T's to make sure that your training, all of your training activities are training, not bullshit, but training. Have a plan. Do op orders. Do and use your equipment the way you would use it. Train like you fight. Remember those days? Yeah, I remember those. That, yeah. yeah. That, that was For how we trained, right? It was drilled into our heads. And, you know, my, my battalion commander, I'll never forget the guy. Um, his name was Al Abbott. He was one of the best commanders I ever had. And I never understood what the guy was fucking saying to me when I was a captain. But he, he pulled me aside and he said, look, if you're not the loneliest guy in your company, there's something seriously fucked up. And right now, I know that you, you, you're getting your feet under you and you're trying to get, you're trying to get command, but you got a really good um, first sergeant. You need to lean on him and you need to ask him what to do. And if he says, get the fuck out of the way, give your guidance and get the fuck out of the way, then get the fuck out of the way. But you should be doing something all the time because you should be the first guy awake, the last guy asleep. And if you're not, guess what? Your Joes are going to know it. Yeah, so that's I, how, uh, I took that's it how Colonel Donahue was. Like he was always, uh, here's the thing I liked about Donahue. He'd walk into my office, say, Pop, I need this fucking done. Get it done. Roger. There's not a bunch of bullshit. 
Just yeah. this is my intent. Get it done. No yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. Colonel, I work for a G5 was that way. Hey, for our gentle listeners out there, I want to reiterate what it is that we're doing here. We got four old dudes in the room, two colonels and two old NCOs talking about the way it used to be in the military and how it is now in the military and just how far our military has truly fallen. A lot of the stuff you see with the trannies and all of that uh, in the military today was absolutely unthinkable in our era. Oh, and the level of disrespect and the level of lack of attention to detail, the lack of duty and discipline that is in this military was unthinkable in our era. Absolutely unthinkable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's fucking... Uh, this is... All right, let, let me uh, let me correct well, this. Well, Sarah and Pop, you gotta, uh, you've been here on Bragg, and the standards here have dropped... Oh, I, I mean, I, Bragg used to be like Standardsville. Correct. We hated yeah. that place because they were all six seventy dash one, the all the time. Yeah, not it's not like that anymore. Now, uh, they don't suit officers. What? That, that's well, that's a typical thing. Uh, they don't address sergeant majors. They don't wear their uniforms properly. Hands in the pockets, unblouse boots. That's a normal thing. I've been taking pictures, going to the PX, watching soldiers go in without covers with their boots on bloused without their tops on right yeah no no i i could and i used to correct them every time i walked to the library i'm like is this a no salute zone because i've i've never got saluted and none of these other officers have one time i'm walking with my major and he tore into these guys at a defect right but most most wouldn't do it they just walk by And, and these officers uh I have to be careful of how I judge them because I think they just gave up on this stuff. It's not that they're bad people, but they get no support. You, you correct the soldier now for not saluting or correcting their uniform or there's the demoralization against uh, demoralization. So I'm not saying they're bad people because I, I did the same thing. I stopped correcting people. I stopped. It was when useless. I was a private first class. I was a rebel because I always walked around with my hands in my pocket and I got smoked. <laughs> and did I stop? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I I remember being at the PX of Quantico and getting out of my car and all the way across the parking lot, I hear this Marine gunny screaming at this Marine, this Marine private who just got out of the car and didn't have his cover on. Cover that fucking grape all the way across the parking lot. <laughs> and this guy's like locked up. Yes, gunny. <laughs> You can hear them all the way across. But those were, they, you know, you walk by an officer or, or like you go through the gate and they don't salute you at the gate. They'd be saluting the oh, back yeah. of the car, right? Oh, uh, yeah. If that's if that's gone, then that means true or good order and discipline. Yeah. Is it, it's gone. I see it every day. Um, wow. You know, go back on base, that's right? Insane. I see officers not being saluted. There's no correction being made. The soldiers with the most fucked up uniforms walking down Main Street across the road, across from Womack Hospital, their hands in their pockets. Everyone watching them. I'd have murdered. I'd have murdered him. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day, when I was an NCO, I would have just. I was walking behind an uh, a specialist in the parking lot of the PX at Yongsan, and he chucks a cigarette butt on the ground. I'm like, oh, no. specialist. He turns around and says, "What, Sergeant?" I'm like, <sighs> "Okay." <laughs> Made him police the entire parking lot, and then said, "Who's your NCO?" I see. And he says, "Oh, I'm with the. He's with the honor guard." Um, oh, so I pick up the phone, call my friend Jesse, who's the sergeant, the platoon sergeant for the honor guard. Jesse, I have one of your guys here. He just uh, chucked a butt on the ground and then gave me shit about it. I'll be right there. <laughs> and that poor, <laughs> that poor kid got smoked for like days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, he's uh, he, got, he, knows he got that. thrown off the honor guard for it. Oh, my oh, God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he got thrown. He got that was 1998. Yeah, it was 98. He got chucked off the Eighth Army Honor Guard for that. Wow! For the the amount of disrespect, he turns around. What sergeant doesn't go to parade rest or anything? <laughs> oh, well, oh, that's not working for me. Sorry. No, no, no. But that discipline is, from what you're saying, Colonel Tom, is like completely gone, huh? Yeah, it's 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 gone. That's I, insane. But but in the beginning, uh, the effort is made to correct. After a while, if it doesn't work, then you kind of give up. You, you kind of want it to fail at that point. Um, wow. I hate to say, but that, that's how that's how that, that's how fucked it had on me. I thought I'd never say that. I had a walk it out of the PX here, uh, well, wait, Sergeant wait Major. Second, wait, yeah. wait one second. 
you need to yeah you you need to share what you're going to do for the next year because you shared it with me and it makes a lot of sense given what you just went through we we were talking about the job situation yeah you should share with everybody what you're going to do for the next year because this is this is directly applicable to what you just went through yeah it's um so i retired force i was forcefully retired basically back in september and uh, my intention was probably to get a job. So I had lots of job offers immediately, pretty good ones too. Um, I, but I made the conscious decision not to work anywhere. Um, well, you got to really compress. Also, so I did, I, I thought it'd take three months, took a little longer. I'm, I'm still messed up. But not, actually, this whole experience I had last two years, I, I, it was very good for me in the end. If I would have stayed in the military now, Sir and Pop if, or anyone here, if we were still in the military, We'd be UCMJ. We'd be in Leavenworth. I, I, I'm telling that to everyone here. We we would not be able to make it a day or two without uh, being charged with UCMJ for the same stuff that we did that was normal back a few years ago. So I'm grateful for getting basically kicked out. Um, I'm grateful for the people that I've met who also got kicked out for the same reason. I, I look at them as a level above the others. And what I noticed too is that the ones that are left, they they can't comprehend how someone could say no to something and they couldn't. They, they can't fathom that. And they, it's not that we're better for saying no. For example, in my case, the COVID vaccine. It, it's the after effects of it. Mm. These people they doubled down on their evil because they had to go home. And what makes me different? Why couldn't I say no, even though I believed it? So when you confront, have these guys in the units that said no, and they were not getting kicked out, they were, they were isolated for that reason. And now I'm, I'm not getting a job because, first of all, I, I think that what they're doing now um, is if you take a job now, especially in the government sector, uh, you're going to get booted out. It's going to ruin your whole career for the rest of your life. <clears throat> yeah. I, my, my brothers, uh, for example, going through that same thing now. I warned him about a year ago. I went to his party when he was transitioning transitioning jobs. And look where he's at now. He's here in my house because he's about to get booted out of the VA. Wow. Um, yeah. A lot of guards and I talked with and people going to the civilian sector, the same stuff is happening. So I'm gonna yeah. sit back, see what happens, um, because it's definitely not worth the couple of bucks I make to have the rest of my life compromised by some uh, uh, people uh, Let's just who say may it. not agree with my views. Yeah, well, dick sucking, <laughs> butt fucking, loose gay, butt twerking queers. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at the Pentagon now, it's a fucking diversity hire zoo. Okay, and if you don't fit that, uh, and, and I'm hearing from the pen, these people still talk to me. I've, I've, I've got everyday access to them, and they share their complaints. Uh, it's the best thing for them to do is to do nothing as little as possible. And that's happening in my headquarters that I previously worked at. Wow. All these people want to do is as little as possible, um, until they hit their 20. And right? saying, this is the, this is the, that's I'm glad it. you brought that up, man, because yeah. that's, that's exactly what I wanted you to get to because that the, that's the other side of this, right? This is the side that I, cause I have <clears> conversations <throat> with with uh ltcs all the time and what drives me crazy is they're all like well i, I gotta stick it out for my retirement i'm like you're not getting this there is yeah. no retirement they are going to run the economy into the ground they're already doing it yeah they're trying to do it by december so they can roll us into the social scoring system and this central bank digital currency that's the end state you're not going to have a retirement no. they want to give you fucking bugs and give you shots every year and they want you to sign up for it voluntarily the more friction we add to the system and look, I, I got to give them credit for still being in the system. Cause I would have, I would have taken a bottle of whiskey at a 45 and dealt with some of these people very directly. And it would have been a very short conversation with a lot of very, very fast comments. But the point is, is that I would have, I would have not made it this far, right? I couldn't make it past 13. And that was before any of this started. I saw the right now on the wall then, but you know, the, this is not about bad leadership. It's about indoctrination Correct. into a system this that is, is designed to fail. And we're mm -hmm. seeing it fail. 
What's what's happening? Now, this is what most people don't realize. Every institution in our society has been infected and infiltrated by the Chinese and communism. Every institution, even churches. And now the COVID stuff, everybody thinks the COVID stuff was about the vaccine. No, mm -hmm. the COVID stuff was about building the systems and the infrastructure to support the social scoring system. The vaccine was designed to kill people off and to create buckets of people that the vaccine deniers, the vaccine supporters, yep. the trans, the gay, you put everybody into buckets and then you have them fight each other and then you could go do whatever you want, which is exactly what they're trying to do. The it was also a compliance test. Hey, gentlemen, oh, we just absolutely. hit 930, so we got to start hitting some super chats here. So, Jimmy, can you come on board? Are you there? Yes, sir. I am here. All right. Evil so, button uh, pushing monkey is hanging out in the background. Let's start off with the YouTube super chats. What do we got? All right. Let's see. We'll jump in here. It's got a dry fi with a $5 Canadian. Got says says uh, Op Honor was Canadian's versions of Sharp. Hey, Pop, take a wild guess uh, what happened to the guys that came up with it. <laughs> I, I don't know. They probably got promoted. <laughs> probably. See, at, uh, Mario, Mario Trujillo with $10. Uh, in 2012, an enlisted buddy brought his CO to our range, range and gym day. CO told me a 410, 150 pounds. You're a better shot. Uh, you're a better shot and are in better shape than half the enlisted. I thought he was messing with me. Unfortunately, he's probably not. Yeah. See, uh, fan I am with uh, five dollars Australian. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, forgive my civilian ignorance, but what defines a communist and the difference between a socialist? Social socialism is the waiting room for communism. Yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you don't know uh, what communism is, you were not taught properly in school. It's not that hard to learn exactly what that is. But uh, let's just face it, socialism and communism, the experiment failed between 1901 and 1999 to the tune of hundreds of millions of lives. And that's all we got to say about that. Uh, let's see, got a Pamela Henderson dropping $1.49 uh, with a uh, wiener in the chat. <laughs> Let's see, you got uh, Helena Jennings with a uh, Canadian $5 with a jumping uh, video game controller emoji. Nice. All right. I like that. Let's see, uh, Sean St. George dropping $9.99 here. It says, uh, listening to this inf uh, infiltration conversation in the officer corps makes me feel there are some of the beginnings to mid stage of a mission creep towards military, crew, uh, military coup. Am I wrong? Well, I. I don't, I, I can't answer that right now. I have to, there has to be a few more variables before I can actually uh, put my finger on that. Yep. Let's see, uh, next one, uh, Shadow Tempest for $10. Uh, besides my ex-wife, part of the reason why I separated from the army was my involvement with behavioral health because I was deemed too aggressive to be an 11 Bravo. Don't ask me why I found it odd. Wow. All right. That's crazy. Yeah. And Sean St. George coming back with uh, two 499s in a row here. First one, when I was in the army, there was a saying, there's only one thief in the army. Everyone else is trying to get their shit back. Yeah, it's totally true. <laughs> yep. And his second one here, uh, one of my old units mottos was mission first, men always. We remade it. We remade it to reflect what was really happening. Mission first, men never. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because if you uh, if you if you put the uh, the men first, well, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to do this to you. You are fined one homo suspicion point for violation of the man code morality statute. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let's see. And uh, last one here on YouTube, we got a uh, Dizia Bronx with 4.99. In the words of the fat electrician, I love this. It's called strategic transfer of equipment to an alternate location. Fair enough. Yes, sir. All right, we'll jump over here. Rumble. Uh, we had a uh, seven hundred and seventy viewers over seventy-two oh, viewers over on YouTube, and only four hundred twenty-one likes, gents. Yeah, you guys are fucking up. Oh, man. Come on now. You know, you know, you know what might happen. I'm 
Just don't do it. Say, don't do it, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll jump over here to uh, Rumble here. Uh, SW Labor with five dollars. Think of the like button as a woman's firm, tight ass, and spank it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah. I like. It. Just make sure. Just make sure it's uh nice and clean. You don't want to get any uh cootie juices on your hands. Uh, let's see. Uh, net guy, nineteen seventy-five dollars. Phrasing. Yeah. Uh, Marine staff sergeant I worked with on Leatherneck. They barred his reenlistment, even though even though he was cleared of all wrongdoing. Yes, a whammin made a complaint. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen exactly that. Yep. Let's see. Oh, just had uh, James McLeod jump in over on YouTube with $20. Uh, you will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. Pop will teach you. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right. We'll jump over here. Back over to Rumble here. We got Armed Ohio Heathen 92 with a $50 donation. So he gets uh, one of these. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank you very much. Yeah, he says, uh, young, straight, white men do not want to fight for a dying feminist empire that hates them and will slander them at any opportunity. Shocker. Want to smell True it? Story. You're yeah. absolutely correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Berserker Brad, 1983, coming in with $25. Battle Dwarf. Well, I'm here what? now, so I, I will make sure to push this button. Push the button to make AOC chase pop. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> All right. Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's AOC Chase? Yeah, there she is. Nice. I like it. It's just terrifying. Yep. It's, 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 it's terrifying. That is, that is terrifying. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mick Tomato coming in with $5. No. I just had my retirement go into effect. Yes, he did. Mm. Yeah. I'm in the same boat, so. Uh, as Godspeed to you both, man. Hopefully you guys don't get called up because it's that's bullshit. Let's see. Uh, net guy coming back with the dollar. Watch out, MGTOW Mando. Change your address. Become like Jack Reacher. Hmm. All right. Advice. Oh, here you, here you go, Pop. And uh, uh, Colonel Tom, uh, Tom. Net guy coming back in. Dina. Is delusional, idiotic, narcissistic ass. <laughs> and that's nice. absolutely correct. <laughs> I, th I think he deserves uh, one of these. Totally fitting. Nice. That was good. So you got a long shot, triple zero with $50. He says, just by the first round. All righty. Well, before we do that, we're going to give you one of these. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Thanks, man. Oh, man. I like that. really like that uh, Dino phrase. That was, good one. that was pretty good. Let's see. Uh, Frank Rizzo won with $10, giving us a thumbs up. All right. Hopefully not a, hopefully not a thumbs up the ass. Because we're not like that. We don't swing like that, man. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, you go there a lot, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Phrasing, phrasing, <laughs> phrasing. Well, I get, I guess. Well, I got to play it again. You are fined one homo suspicion point for violation of the man code morality statute. <laughs> I'll get, I'll give myself a homo suspicion point for that one. All right, all right. Got to crack a joke. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Mick Tomato coming back another five dollars. When I left the Army Medical in 06, I was shocked at how political the medical officers were. Toxicity was horrible. Why are medical officers political? Don't answer that question. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mando's a good dude. Uh, one of these days, we need to have him on the show, and he can uh, definitely uh, share some stories. And uh, if it's a uh, make pop puke stream, trust me. Mm -hmm. He has the stories I, to make that happen. I, I hate those, man. I, I hate those. Yeah, but we don't. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always fun to watch Pop Squirm. Ah, uh, on. Next one. Uh, Shellback Stunts with $20. Good show as always. Thanks, gents. Man, thank, thank you. you for, thank, thank you guys you. for tuning in, man. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, Mando coming back again. Uh, $2. So, Pop. So, what, Pop, would a... would 
Would Pop get counseling when he needed TP for the field? <laughs> if I stole it, maybe. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, sometimes I got counseled a lot. So. Sometimes you got to shit a Pringles can every now and then. Yeah, you shit one can and nobody lets you forget it. Yep. Uh, Tomahawk with ten dollars. Uh, Colonel Murray, you outrank Pop. Order him to have a troop on his show. I believe we read this one. Uh, on a related note, have Battle Dwarf on your round table. Lastly, where's Shaggy? Oh. Right here, man. It's right and, there. Uh, well, he he needs something to help rub something out. So, uh, uh, my apologies, Colonels. Uh, I got to play this. Oh. <laughs> And I'm that's emotionally not scarred. Yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> there you go. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, well, it it could be worse. They could have uh, asked for something else, but I'm pretty sure we don't have do one it. of those in the uh, in the chamber here. Let's see, I got International House of Whoop Ass. Five dollars. I love that screen name. Awesome. Yeah. This is an open question. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, something happens in the U.S. that allow allows posse. Uh, Posse there you go. Thank you. Uh, to be in place, how many vets will come back in the clock to clean house? I, I don't know. It, it's all situation dependent. Yep. So we'll yeah. see. Also, one of those questions that I'm not answering on a recordable source. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for uh, the backstage. Let's see, uh, no, Digital Do, uh, $2. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, Digital Do coming in uh, with $2. Uh, who? World Homicide Organization. Mm. Fitting. 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 Yep. Uh, Mando, Battle Dwarf, we need a killery due to lacks of likes. My discretion. Oh, uh, no. Uh, I think I'm going to be nice and I'll just play this one. No Hillbilly Hillary tonight. Good. Good. <laughs> I hate that one too. It's it's that still bad. anything to do with her at all. Is just, that is just wrong. It's yeah, it's it's still bad. I'm assuming before she has somebody killed, she sends them something like that so that they die with like the worst oh. scarred memory they can. Possibly. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes sense. Uh, Mando coming back again. Uh, last time I went to Fort Hood, I was appalled at the lack of discipline of soldiers at particularly all levels I saw. Yep. yep. That's shocking. That's just shocking to me. It really is. Yep. Just be sure to uh, don't smell it and don't taste it. Because you're going to have a bad time. Uh, let's see, uh, Cave Toad with $20, uh, non X mill myself, but really enjoying the insight. Thank you for having LTC Steven on, uh, from his show is how I found your channel. All right. Uh, welcome Cave Toad. We always have a good time over here. Let's see, uh, oh, uh, card 1776. Um, I, again, I, I, I apologize, Colonels, but uh, he's asking for another Hillary. Oh, no. <laughs> I hate that one, man. That's the See, worst. Here's here's the thing, though. It probably doesn't bother Colonel Z that much because that's standard Fayetteville issue right there. <laughs> oh, I see that every day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dependipotuses here. Yeah. <laughs> Dependipotamus all day long. Yikes. I was going to say Lopa, but, you know, <laughs> oh, we, his own. We, we, have, we have worse ones in the, uh, in the background there for you, sir, if you'd of course you do. I would expect no less. <laughs> Let's see. I uh, got a Tantalum 180 with $5. The independent thinking y'all are talking about was never a tenet of modern gov governmental policy. Heed the forefathers with primary focus on militias. The rot has only come to a head in the recent years. I can't argue with that. That is uh, 
That, that's good advice. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Kno72 coming in with $2. Uh, all this shit is why I'm working on my garden, which I'm, t which I'm tilling right now, in fact. Want to have my food supply under my control. You're not yep. wrong. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Professor Blake Pooh Ass Blaster 3000. Another, <laughs> another one of my favorite uh, screen names there. It says, uh, Pop, I'm glad that I am not in the military because a lot of 556 and 762 haircuts would be happening. Just saying. Yeah. Well, I hope that doesn't happen, man. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the people don't understand just exactly how vicious that will be. And I do. And I don't want to see that. I, I hope we can steer away from this. Hope. Hope. Well, hope in one hand, shit in the other. As the saying I know goes. the drill. Fills up first. <laughs> yeah, I know the uh, drill. So yeah. uh, Barricott McMu uh, McMusing with $5. Holy shit, I knew things were bad, but goddamn. Thanks for the truth and the nightmares. I know that. Guy. Welcome. As the, uh, well, as the uh, saying goes, that Crusader Nate likes to say, well... Nightmares of Dream 2. See, so, yeah, Professor Blake is asking for a uh, Hillbilly Hillary. We just did the Hillbilly Hillary, so I don't want to don't want to uh, scar uh, Lieutenant Colonel Steven there anymore. All right. <laughs> so you got a uh, Spud Hut, $5. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all veterans on here for their service. Thank you. I was young uh, and I needed the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, digital do coming back. Pop personally, there um, the we're not worthy should be played for vets, even though some don't want that. Huh? Yeah. Listen, like my my last like twelve years was more like just a desk job. So, I mean, the army took care of me. They they could have kicked me out in two thousand six from my TBI, but they let me recover and come back to the fight. So I, I can't really complain about that. Yep. See, so, uh, next one, I uh, got Southwest Labor, $5. Internment camps set up in the U.S. by Clinton during his pres presidency. Well, actually, FEMA camps have been set up for quite some time. It's, it's a universal camp that can be converted to anything that you want. You just have to turn the barbed wire facing in or facing out. It's just that simple. Yeah. Yep. I uh, got Rich 2A with $10. Pop, been watching for years. Former 11 Bravo, just supporting the channel. Thank you very much, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see, next one. Alucard 1776. He is requesting a video here. Let me find Don't it. That one. Don't be that no, one. No, it's, it, it's, not what, it's not what you think, man. It's not what you All think. Right. But uh, let's see, uh, we'll do it this short. We'll do the short. Uh, nah, nah, I feel like spoiling you guys. We'll do the long version. Oh, God. It's just disturbing. It's a disturbing. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, a little box wine of Catland for everybody tonight. That's and Digivu coming back again. Uh, Pop, good panel tonight. Thank you. Oh yeah. Uh, Tomahawk coming in again. Five dollars. Uh, seriously, Colonel Steve, get Battle Dwarf on your roundtable. X Intel would love to hear his input. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy, man. I'm cheap. I can I can be bought for like a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Professor Blake is uh, asking you, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Steve, uh, what is your YouTube channel about? Uh, I don't have a YouTube channel. I have a Rumble channel. Rumble. And uh, okay. so I'll, I'll make it. I'll give you the cliff notes. We do uh, current analysis of what's going on from the information war, as well as we talk about preparedness on my channel. So I have, there's 12 of us now, Pop's one of them, uh, soon to be Battle Dwarf. Um, and we, we do, uh, and it's an open forum. So we have folks bounce in and bounce out. We've got former Army, former Army Intel. We've got uh, Air Force pilot. We've got first responder now. 
Um, in fact, long shots in the mouth. <laughs> so we, we spend our time talking about signal versus noise, which is here's the things you should pay attention to. And here's the stuff you shouldn't pay attention to. Yes. And I talk about uh, the way I term it is uh, sphere of influence and line of sight, meaning who do you have around you right now that if, if the shit hits the fan, you can trust, you know, it's going to be there, you know, has skills and then line of sight, which is all the people in your network increase your line of sight around the community and what's going on and, and uh, gathering intelligence around your community. That's what we talk about every week. And uh, we've got a pretty, uh, pretty stacked. So brush beater NC scout, he does radio contours on the show. Uh, Matt Bracken, he's an author. He's on the show. Um, troopers on the show. He's a, uh, um, basically emergency preparedness and threat analyst. Um, I've got Colonel Conrad, who was former division planner, uh, Colonel Piper, who is uh, former Intel that's uh, still in the system. There's, there's a group of us. And uh, I, I'm going to have to up my game, though, because of uh, what I've seen here tonight, which is both appalling and wonderful at the same time. So uh, I'm just going to have to up my game now because I, I am – Wow, way behind the power curve. So I will fire myself tonight until I can unfuck myself. Sure. And uh, what it, what is the uh, the name of your channel over on uh, Rumble for everybody out there out there to find I am you? Super to... easy to find. It's the same name that's printed on the screen, right in the lower left uh, of my screen. Just look up LTC Stephen Murray, and you will find my channel on both Telegram, on Rumble. And um, you'll see me on um, Spotify as well as Apple Podcast. All right. Colonel, very, very quickly, I have, based on our conversation this evening, uh, three different sets of data that I think you're going to be very interested in and some information that I'm not going to chuck out here. We'll decide how to handle that later. But I've got some stuff I think you need to see. Absolutely. There you go. All right. Yeah. Everybody check out LTC Stephen Murray over on Rumble. Be sure to do that because we tell you to. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alucard coming back again. Uh, Battle Dwarf, where's the what? mead? We are thirsty. There's 10 gallons in two barrels sitting right in the other room. <laughs> that shit's good, man. Why the go. fuck am I buying drinks if you're making booze? What the fuck? <laughs> where are you? I'll send you a damn bottle. I'm in Arizona. You better put a lot of ice around it. It doesn't need to be ice. It's it's honey. This will be around like 3,000 years from now when they dig you up and assume you're an Egyptian. Nice. So I'm going to be there a Twinkie after I have this. Nice. Okay. Yes. yes. Note to self. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Cliff3188 coming in with $5. It says, uh, the military has been anti-accountability for decades. A junior enlisted female had her car repoed with her CIF car or CIF, uh, CIF gear in it, showed up late, had a bad attitude, and I was the bad guy for writing her up. Yeah, I bounced Shock. that bitch right out of there, man. What the what? <laughs> yep, I heard every word, but what? It. Do you want me to read that again? Because stupid. Carry on. Carry, carry on. All right, uh, Alucard seventeen seventy six coming back five dollars. I don't trust my folks because they are conservatives, and one of them said you were at J six. I'll turn you in. Yep, a little bit of a troll, a little bit of a troll, troll one there. I know that Ali Card's a good dude. It's so got uh, Ed Seven Cab with twenty dollars. I do not want to live in a world where fat women are no longer a commodity. Trooper. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Somebody jumped right. on the grenade. Yep, let's see here. Let me jump back over here to the YouTube channel here because I know we had a few more coming in. Uh, Demaster12 with $2 says, uh, give me a minute. I have an email. Answer, fan I am. Email to answer. Okay, we'll take a look at that. Uh, Alex Patino with $5. That's another good dude. Hey, for Sergeant Pop, why do you think the most educated or indoctrinated people like uh, Prof are the most socialist commie leftists. Say that one more time. Uh, why do you think the most educated or indoctrinated people like prof oh, professors are the most socialist communist leaders? Because they are, they're physically, mentally, and morally weak. That, that's, that's what communism preys on. It preys on the, the useful idiots. I don't care how many letters you have after your name. 
If you can't think for yourself and you don't know how to think, you're an ignorant maroon. We can do a whole show on that because I actually discovered. Write it the, down. We'll work on yep, it. Yep. I discovered the go. root of that some uh, about a year and a half ago. That'd be a good uh, one. And it starts at Columbia I, University in 1932. Carry on. Nice. <laughs> uh ht rsp super with ten dollars thank you for sharing your stories tonight guys i hope more people wake up to what's coming hmm. don't don't uh don't hold your breath on that one yep just uh yankee watchdog with five dollars uh pop i keep an empty pringles can kicking around you never know when it come in handy <laughs> Yeah, Colonel Murray doesn't know this. Doesn't know the story. The I story. don't need to. <laughs> this know, is, I already know where that shit's going. This this has <laughs> passed into legend. Sick and wrong. It's already attached. I don't even have to wonder. <laughs> this is yep, one of those moments where I'm like, I don't want to know where that came from. Like, don't come back in my office and tell me anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sergeant, am I going to jail? Probably, Colonel. Carry on. Most most likely. There you I'd go. Let's like get a TFC Ravel Ish Ook. With the uh, five ninety nine euro with his first chat, oh yeah, Ooh. welcome. Thank uh, it you. says, uh, "Thank you for all that you do, Pop. You the man. I do share on my street. What's the current count? Five hundred and forty three. I'm working on five forty four. He's just got to send his email in. I see. Uh, I did yeah, check the email. I did check the email. We might have that story in there. So, listen in for a." Uh, Blake to uh, share that story. We'll, we'll probably Thursday. read it in on Thursday then. Yep. There you go. All right. Let's see here. Let me jump back over to the rumble here. Uh, Professor Blake Pooh-Ass Blaster again. Love that screen name. It's bad. It's funny. Uh, LTC Stephen Murray found your channel and followed. Cool. There you go. Everybody in the chat, find LTC Stephen Murray and follow him. Do it now. While you're at it, hit the like button. Yes. Yeah, do that. Smash it. Uh, Alley card 1776 coming back in. Uh, Pop, who would you trust? Who who would you trust? The toy uh, trust toilet ch in chief or hellhound? None of them. I, I, you can't. The dick taster in chief that we have now is out of his mind. You know, and uh, what are you talking about? The VP of hellhound? Or are you talking about uh, killer Hillary? They're both hellhounds. They're both incompetent, in my opinion, and corrupt. Ugh, either one, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, and, uh, what, are you talking about the VP of hellhound or are you talking about uh, Killer Hillary? They're both hellhounds. They're both incompetent, in my opinion, and corrupt. Uh, uh, either one, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, and, uh, what, are you talking about the VP of hellhound or are you talking about uh, Killer Yeah, it's, it's all bad. Let's see here. You jump over here to the MGTOW side of the chat. The best chat on the internet. Uh, Colonels, if you uh, happen to uh, if you happen to be uh, curious, uh, MGTOW.tv Look up Redonculus and just hang out in the chat for a little bit. If the subjects are boring you, trust me, Jim, the chat you will like. Jim, Jimmy <laughs> just make sure your team. wives aren't around. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Crazy Uncle here with the first one here with $10. As, as of the first of the month, I've been out of the Army for two years. No joke. One day I'll be on the stream and we can talk about what I've seen over 20 years across 10 different duty stations. It's so fucked up! Tonight I am unable to sit and watch. I'll be listening while I'm in the gym tomorrow, but best to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, good sir. Very good. Uh, single for life coming in. Uh, there is no also no more discipline in the Canadian Forces. It's a fucking shame. Yep. Shit show. Canada, Canada had good mech imp for a little while. We worked with some of their mech imp. They were really good. Uh, yeah. I, I, I hung with some of their their paratroopers that they used to have. and Those guys were fucking crazy. <laughs> They're good guys, too. Solid. That's a shame yep. what's going on in Canada. Yep. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Uh, Never again with $5. This is a response to Slap Monkey. Uh, he says, I think that the DC fucknuts were afraid of General Schwarzkopf of, of, of first Iraq shit due his seemingly no shit given attitude as compared to the others since uh, Mac and Patton era. And that's why he wasn't in public view afterwards. 
Don't know. Good to hear Pop's take on that. Mm -hmm. And he does uh, have a picture of the veteran of the day, and that is Norman Schwarzkopf. Yeah, he's dead now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope they leave so, yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, Singer for, Single for Life is coming back with a uh, another request. So, again, Colonels, I apologize for this, but <sighs> this one's hilarious. <laughs> That one, man. <laughs> That's so wrong. The worst part of that is how well Pop's face fits. Yes, I know. It, it's that, it's that's bad. That's truly second wrong. I am inspired with confidence right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, if you would if you'd like to know uh, to get in touch with uh, someone that does the uh, all the deep fakes and whatnot, I can uh, get in, get get the the information to you. I'm still waiting for the Pop Rain Man video. Why have you got to bring that up, man? Come on. What, the Pop Rain Man video? Why would I bring up the Pop Rain Man video? Uh, I don't want to see It's not like that. I want a Pop Rain Man video brought up. Uh-oh. Uh, Billy, if you're in the uh, the chat there, uh, get on it there. Let's see. Uh, Transformational Synergy with $14. Just want to thank the, th the two colonels for joining today and Pop and Battle Door for hosting. Good stories. Disturbing and horrifying state of things. Colonel Tom, sorry to hear about the shit show your discharge was. Yeah. Thanks. That's 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 fucked up. Yeah. Uh, Kira, Kira Ninja 00, uh, $5. Hello, everyone. I was late to the show. Thank you to the colonels for being here with Pop and Battle Dwarf. Did you serve with Pop? Uh, Zaramba did. He was my commander for a quick minute, and then uh, he was my direct supervisor for a while, too. I did not. I would have murdered him on the first counseling session. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, there's no alleged in that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Hopefully there would have been video, though. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, well, because the uh, the captain could not join us tonight, uh, Single for Life is requesting another video. <laughs> Right. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one they rip on. That's good shit right there. Yep. There we go. Wow. All right. Let me double check here. It looks like nothing donated over on Odyssey, but we do got 20 people watching over there. All right. It's growing. Let's see. Yep. MGTOW's got 34. D Live is rocking five. And, and Twitch has. 13 not strong there all, all right here. and we did have a few cash apps so come in here let me just jump on these yeah yeah we got to cover those so we don't miss them let's see uh tony donated ten dollars no message there thank you very much there tony yeah uh paul throwing twenty dollars here tonight it says uh thank you for the insight colonels murray and z Oh, yeah. All right. He's going to have their and Crusader threw in five dollars. He says, "Yeah, just because." I'm surprised he didn't request a Hillary video. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Yeah, I, I think we've had our fill of Hillary. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, Brian threw in uh, ten dollars. Says, uh, "I talked to my talked to my sheriff about a militia. Might have to send in an email to uh, follow up on that one there." Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see. You got Heidi threw in fifty dollars, saying thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much, Heidi. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. There you go. And uh, oh well, we already played it. 
Crusader Nate, so apologies to that. He was asking for a scene pop in Vegas for a ten dollar donation there, but I think we've uh, I think we've tortured the uh, the colonels enough with our the uh, shenanigans that we have going on. All right. Uh, let's see here. Jump back. Jumping back to YouTube here, just to cover any bases here. We got me, not me, but me, the the guy there with four ninety nine. Uh, any of you guys seen the great the movie The Greatest Beer Run Ever? No, no, I know of it, but I have not seen it. Hmm. No, I think that would be a that would be a co- uh, question for Blake. Yeah, he's That's a movie, he's a movie buff. Yeah. He's also a seventeenth yep. level wizard. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Soylent Green with ten dollars, guys. Buffarillos are everywhere. The big girls are here to stay. Former eighty-eight, you here? Every bar I went went to, there were big girls. That's that's standard issue though. We used to we used to call them the grenade. Yeah, you designate one guy to jump on the grenade, while everybody else got to go up. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> that's, that's always been. Fun. Is that everything? Uh, Demaster12, $5. Email sent to Redonculus from Christian under the difference between socialism, fascism, and communism. Uh, I could do a whole show on that off the top of my head as well. That, that's a long yeah. one. We can't, we don't have enough time to read that. Nowhere near, yeah. yeah. We will cover this though, man. We quite, will. quite a bit there, but yep. I will uh, be sure to star that one so that it is saved there. Let's see here. Let me double check the rumble chat here. Make sure we didn't have any late entries here. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Southwest Labor, $5. Uh, LTC Murray, should we be concerned about the bird flu or other infectious diseases that are popping up so suddenly? No, that's all bullshit. Yep. It, here's, yep. the, here's what they're doing. So they're, they're trying to control. So they need to do three things. I'll, make, I'll keep this short, Pop. They need to do three things. Number one, they need to control the food supply. They need to control the money supply and they need to cr- control logistics and your movement. So this is a, this is just more of the same of them destroying the food supply to drive us towards some kind of a famine. Again, read pawns in the game, read about the Russian famine, read about the yes. Irish famine. You'll see exactly what, what we're talking about. This is a controlled demolition of the food supply using whatever mechanism they can use. Mm-hmm. Uh, look back a few months where a, a, a chicken farm and or a, an account a, a cow, what do you call it, processing place blew up because of methane gas. All of its noise. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. The signal is the fact that they're going after the food supply. They're trying to drive us into the social scoring system by offering us universal basic income, um, the controlled food supply, and controlled housing. That's the end state they want to reach. And your answer Standard. Should, yeah, go ahead. Standard, standard Bolshevik Marxist tactics. Exactly. Yep. And your answer is twofold. Number one, full fucking stop. At some point, when they if they pass a draft, this is what we do. Full stop. We take the whole country, full stop. No commerce, no movement, no nothing. Everybody stops. For the better part of two weeks, I guarantee you, the economy will collapse. Number two, if they put foreign troops on our soil, they put foreign troops in the military, you pick up arms. That is treason. And it's pure. It's already sp- done. Well, it's already done, but not on the scale that I'm talking about. Yeah, I got you. That's fair. So, yeah. And, uh, and that's Ellie Carr. Uh, Ali Carter's coming back. Uh, he's answering your uh, the question earlier. The sap, the supernatural kind of hell hellhound. Ah, yeah. There you go. Uh, I got a uh, Barrett McMusing coming back. Uh, Frankfurt School explained. Uh, Internet Archive. Uh, Vertigo pol- uh, politics. Uh, architects of Western decline. Yeah. What are you gonna do, man? What are you gonna do? Let's see, uh, frosted animal cracker. Nice. Uh, with ten dollars, uh, is the ultimate goal of DEI crap and leaders who are traitors to destroy the United States, or is it just to eliminate straight white guys? Seriously, it's both. 
That is so wrong. It's both, actually. Yep. It's a it demoralization is. tactic. It is a large-scale industrialized demoralization tactic. It disrupts everything that we know to be our society. That's what DEI is for. It's just a disruption tactic. Mm. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ali Card coming back. Uh, he says, <laughs> we love to torment Pop. That we do. Yeah. That I don't do. get it. And uh, Southwest Labor coming back. Uh, what would be a good rifle to get? AR-15, AK-47, Mini-14, mini or something else? You can pick up an AR-15 platform with a 16-inch barrel for $359 right now. Do it. Yep. Smith & Wesson uh, MMP-15. I have one of those. Very easily to uh, change out the furniture and everything else on it. Very cheap, very easy rifle to run. And I love it. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Professor Blake coming back in. Uh, Pop, you should have Tom Z and LTC Stephen Murray Battle Dwarf with Lord Zed on a show. That would be awesome. Yeah. We have to put that together. That's a lot of logistics. Yep. That's uh, a lot of stuff. Let's see. Uh, MX Stilgar coming in with two in a row. Uh, first one, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait because they were slant drilling and stealing Iraqi oil from under their feet. Saddam went to no. the UN and they ignored his case completely. I don't care. That's Arab stuff. I'm American. Yeah. And uh, he follows it up with, uh, I'm not a fan of Saddam, but he did have his reasons. Yeah. Well, he died well. I, I saw nothing like that in the community while I was in. But uh, that's a whole other show. That's yeah. Yep. He did die uh, well. Yeah. He did die well. Got a tomahawk coming back again. Uh, get back our chickens. Just ask Battle Dwarf. They eat worms, bugs, grubs, and grass. They, and you sure. get tasty eggs in return. They eat ticks and fleas as well. Yep, absolutely. See, uh, Tangelo 180, uh, LTC Murray, come back often, ver uh, very often, please. You are very on point, brother. That's yep. up to Pop. That's not up to me. <laughs> yeah, we'll get There's only so on. much of me he can stand. Remember, I'm a colonel. <laughs> we'll get back on here. It's not a big deal. Who let this colonel in the room? Somebody get this colonel out of my skiff. There you go. <laughs> See, uh, Digital Dew coming in with the two dollars. Nestle CEO says humans have no rights to water. Fuck them. I'm sorry, but uh, Nestle, you have no room to talk about, about human rights because you use child slave labor to yeah. harvest your cocoa, just saying. Yep. He can he can eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> not not just a bag of dicks, the entire bag of dicks. Absolutely. I like it. Let's see, uh, Digital Dude coming back in. Uh, Pop, what's your opinion on uh, folding ARs for backpack carry? Uh, the minute you have a folding AR, you got to be really careful of the um, the oh, what is it the uh, spring and the buffer. So you get a good system. Uh, some of the stuff that you get that folds, like if you, you when you fold it up, I've seen the spring and the buffer fly out. And it's a big pain in the dick. So you got to make sure you you get the right equipment. Yep. No one likes a pain in the dick. Let's see here. Uh, the Green Mantis with $5. Speaking of auctioneers being hilarious, here's an awesome auctioneer song. That is a YouTube link. We are still on YouTube, so apologies, good sir. We cannot play it at this time. Sorry. Let's see, uh, Southwest Labor coming back again. Uh, for you home gardeners, keep in mind that you will not be able to get fertilizer you need to run your mini farm. You can make your own fertilizer. You do it every I day. I have chickens. So I don't need fertilizer. Yep. Ch chickens or find a uh, local rancher and I'll you know, just say, hey, let me give you 50 bucks for you know, cow a shit. couple wheelbarrows of your cow shit. Yep. Yep. Just make sure that you don't. Uh, I, I, it too I can literally just go to my dairy farm and scoop up a couple of shovels of cow shit and take it with me. I was going to say, how's that conversation go? I uh, need some of your shit. <laughs> You just knock on the door. Like, hey, man. I my, my dairy farmer won't care. She'll be fine. Yeah, go ahead. Have, yep. have a good time. Right, let's get through yeah. the super chats, man. Go ahead. All go right. Ahead. Like, all right. Uh, let's see here. Jumping back over to YouTube. Make sure we don't miss anybody. Looks like we're all caught, caught up on there. Double check the rumble here because I know that chat likes to jump on me because it's pain in my I, dick. 
I'd like to point out that cow shit was the conversation stopper here. Yeah. But uh, Crusader Nate also makes a uh, solid point in the chat. Uh, fish guts. Yes. 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 Do not do not uh, think about skipping on the fish oil or anything like that. So works great. That's what my dad uses in his garden, actually. Let's see, That's and cool. let's see uh, uh, over on MGTOW.TV here, we got Single Flap coming back again. Don't worry, guys. He's not asking for another video. He's just saying thanks for a great show from an old grunt. Thank you. That's here. And it looks like no donations over on uh, D Live there. Okay. It looks like we're all caught Ready up the there. Let me just double check email here. We are all caught up on cash apps there. None have come in here. Uh, oh, just have one last, one last one come in from a uh, TFC Ravelish Ook, uh, five ninety nine euro. Dear Colonel Murray. Your references are Carl Schwab, textbook, The Great Reset. It's all there. Thank all of you. You're welcome, bro. Share the channel. All right, ready for the safety briefing? Yep, there you go. But all righty, Pop, I believe we're ready. Yep, all right. Share it. Don't drink and drive. Safety don't, briefing! Yeah. Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and swim. It never works out. Okay. If you uh, must fornicate, wear a condom. Take it with you, flush it down the and flush it down the toilet. Watch it go all the way down. If you must fight, do everything in your power to run away first. If you can't, do not go to the ground because that's where you get stomped out. All right. Um, rack up, pack up, and stack up. Maintain your situational awareness because if somebody is going to attack you. Something in your environment will be different, and it's up to you to see it. All right. Please. Take steps, water, food, get a e -E, an e, e e plan, do what you got to do to get ready because there's bad shit coming down the pipe. Just saying. There we go. There we go. All righty. Battle Dwarf, any final words from you tonight, good sir? Battle Dwarf is NSTR. <laughs> All Copy right. that. All righty. Uh, Colonel Tom, any final words from you tonight, good sir? No, thanks for having me on. I had a great time. Outstanding, sir. All right. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen, any final words from you tonight, good sir? Come watch the round table. We'll talk about what's coming. Excellent. God bless everyone. And and uh, stay on the stay on afterwards. I want to talk to you a little bit more there, Colonel. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. There you go, gents. Well, that's the show for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed having uh, two former colonels on, and of course, Battle Door from this beautiful bastard over there. No homo. <laughs> so, all righty, gents. Another homo suspicion point. Look at it go. God damn it. Do I got to play it again? No, no, no we're just good. Going. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. They, they give me the pass. So, all right, gents. Thank you guys for so much of your support. Please share, like, comment, and get this word out because this show came straight from the horse's mouth. That's the best place to get the, the word from. So, <laughs> hit the button, Jimmy. All right. Take it easy, everybody.